Good morning, you filthy animals. Man, I thought I set this live for 1025. But let me call my boy, man. Hey, what's up? Hello? Yeah, man, uh, you say you want to talk to me? Hello? Yeah, what's up, Shannon? So you gonna call me a nobody? So I can't talk about LeBron? You ain't got no milk. Skip, 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 You ain't got no reason to talk about LeBron. You bust. <laughs> but I thought you said I wasn't no bust before that. You gonna beat me up by LeBron? You're damn right. Skip, 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 skip. No, I got skip right here. Skip, skip, skip. 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 Skip, skip, skip.
But I'm just saying though, how do you think you get to talk about basketball over me? <laughs> so <laughs> so once you want listen so once you fight once you fight skip then then me and you can fight once you fight skip You sound like him so much, man. I don't know. Man, how, how, how in the fuck do you sound just like that motherfucker, bro? <laughs> 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 hey, man. Yeah. Right. They try to they try to disrespect you and then act like they're not disrespecting you, but yeah. And and Shannon Sharp said I wasn't a bust before, and it's crazy because he came out, he talked to Allen Iverson, he said I wasn't a bust, he don't understand it, and then as soon as I say something that he don't like, he don't agree with about a person that he actually likes, then it's all attack mode. Yeah, in love with her again. He said, I ain't nothing but a fucking farmer. Now, I ain't never told him what I was. <laughs> he said, he said, tallest, farmer. tallest farmer. And this nigga, Great Natty, was a sharecropper, ain't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This nigga forgot where he come from. He picking on farmers and shit. If I was a farmer, wouldn't that be a, a great occupation? Right. <laughs> but all because I said LeBron... Did, did he don't he's not that he doesn't know how to get to a spot there's some holes in his game for them to be saying that he's this all-time great scorer and all these things and all i said was from what i saw from what i observed with me playing with kobe and and uh god rest his soul and me playing with mj i got to see this every day and he's not that so i don't know why i was what that was so offensive i kept it about basketball is he a legend? Is he a top 10 player? Yes. That, that he's. I never said, I never took away from his legacy. They have this conversation almost every other fucking week about who's the GOAT and is he the GOAT? And all they do is roll out these damn stats. And it's like, no, this man doesn't have the arsenal that he needs to be considered what you guys are saying he is. And I, I've been around two players that I can, I can say 100% without a doubt 
from my opinion, from my observation, LeBron is not that. Mm -hmm. You're entitled to it just like anybody else. Right. That's it. I mean, there's no need for, for, for him because he took it personally. Yeah. He actually took it personal. I watched, I sat back and watched the entire thing, analyzed it to the team. All the words and all the reasons why he did what he did. Yeah. And he was told that it was personal. Now, on the other hand, for who to say that, that uh, someone can't defend you? Right. Right. The, the man. The, right. The, listen, bro. The man. The, right. And that's the thing. It's like. He got so personal and so aggressive. I'm like, what's wrong with this nigga? I'm like, everybody gives their opinion who they're around. They go bring up Gilbert Arenas. When he was around me, they bring up every player that's around a certain player. Now, had I talked favorable in LeBron, had I said I've been around Kobe and I've been around MJ and I just want to say LeBron is better than both of them, they would have welcomed that with open, open arms. But because I said something opposite, I, I'm not taking away from his legacy. LeBron is a great fucking player, in my opinion. I even said that in the video. But if you're going to have them them compare, and, and then he, his response to me didn't make any sense. What would you have done? No, you guys have him in this woke category. So I could compare him to the same people that y'all comparing him to. And being that I had firsthand knowledge who better than me that know the difference? This man is not nowhere near Kobe Bryant. He's not nowhere near Michael Jordan. I'm sorry. He's not. He's he's running baseline to baseline to score. Now, he can do that in the first half, and sometimes against smaller teams, he can do that for an entire game. But once he get a, a, a big, strong team like Denver, where they got a big, strong power forward that's his size and he can't just muscle – Teams are going to start playing him just like that. They're going to make him score those layups and have to sprint all the way back. And yeah, you can go, you're going to get your points. You're going to get your numbers, but just don't put them to the free throw line because he's working that hard at 38 years old, just to score. When Kobe and, and, and MJ started to age, when Carl Malone, these, all these great scorers that's in his class, we're not talking about Kwame Brown. We're talking about in his class that they all want to bring up. Carl Malone started relying on a pick and pop jump shot. It was easy. You know, Tim Duncan started relying on that bank shot off the glass. It was easy. They, they are watching a guy train wreck and train bull over people and running and sprinting in year 20, sprinting like this to score. Right. Yeah, I mean, and that's the thing. We got to get we got to get people to see real basketball. They want you to believe their narrative. But real basketball, you're not telling me, yeah, OK, he's 38 years old. What he's doing is amazing. I even said that I've never seen somebody his age that that could even do what he's doing to even be able to have the energy to go be running from coast to coast. But then he gets tired. And in the second half, he just relies on this deep three ball. And if it's falling, hey, great. But if it's not, he's missing, then that's when the team is losing. So to me, he's stifling down the young talent because he can only do he can only do um, one or two things. He's got to get a layup or he's got to shoot a deep ball. There's no in between. Right, right. You know, he didn't have that surrounding him. Those other, his other teammates, because it, it's a team effort. Those other teammates should have stepped up. Dog, we they run this they run this media narrative so hard, dog. I watched the game. I watched the Lakers lose. But if you would have, if you were just reading the articles, if you was just in another country and you were just reading the articles, 
you would have thought the Lakers won the way they were talking about LeBron James' performance in the first half. You would have thought they won, and they lost. And it takes away from the beauty of what Denver did. Denver allowed him to score those points. Look how hard it was. He was driving to the basket damn near every play. Yes, he hit some three-pointers finally, but they made him work hard. You're going to go get layups. You're going to defend this other kid in the end. And look at how many points he scored in the second half. Yeah, and that's what they're going to do to him. And then if he comes back next year doing the same thing at 39, look how hard it is for them to score. He's literally looking for transition buckets and, and, and a foul and an and one. If you don't give him an and one, then he's just going to he's going to tire out by the second half because that's a lot of energy that you spend. Oh, yeah. And so I don't know how that's I don't know how that's taken away from his legacy. He's been great in the full court because he's been so big and athletic. And so while he's a younger man, yeah, you could play like that. But now you're talking about a man pushing 40 years old. He's he's going to take away from an AD. He's going to take away from these guys. Yes, sir. Appreciate you, bro. Can't push the intro. Can't spend any opinion because it's it's uh it's necessary. Yes, sir. You know. But they got they got a whole they got a but go ahead, brother. I'll hit you back. Okay. Yes, sir. Y'all take care. Yep. Yeah, they uh they got a whole clutch sports uh media takeover, in my opinion, because it seems like anybody that says one thing because I got a I got a lot of respect for LeBron, but he does not have a signature move. Uh, he's big, he's strong, he's a bulldozer, but he doesn't have a signature move. You can't tell a guy that watched Kobe Bryant and Michael Jordan, who damn near is the split image of each other when, when Kobe was here, um, a guy who can just turn and shoot over you. <clears throat> MJ had such a relaxed game and such a knack for scoring, he just turned and shoot over you. Kareem, all of these guys that have such a knack for the game, it was easy. They just get you to a spot, and it's over with. KG, once he got down to that low block, he's going to do those pump fakes, and he can turn over you with his jump shot. An aging player has always relied on a jump shot to continue their career. And so all I said was LeBron was supposed to drive to a spot and rise up and elevate and shoot the ball. Um, but – and he's done it before, but when you're tired, when you're aging, and when you don't do that consistently, and you got to work so hard to score, um, this is what happens. I played on a team with an aging player that they try to push. I know exactly what it looks like. I know exactly how frustrated those young players are. There's no secret that there's been several players that left the Lakers that have gone on to have good careers. Brandon Ingram, there's, there's many of them. So let's not act like what I'm saying don't have any validity. You can make a joke about me. You can talk about my career. Well, then two things can be true at the same time. But LeBron is not that, from my opinion. He is not that what they're trying to make him be. They can talk about all the stats you want. And if you let Melo back in the league, he'll probably catch those stats. But, you know, this is this is a I told you, in my opinion, stars are not born. They're created. They 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 make you have a love affair. Look at how many people attack me just over my personal opinion. Since when the person had to be good or better than the player they're talking about. If that's the case, all these media pundits need to shut the fuck up. If that's the standard that we're going to have now, that if you're not better than the person that you're talking about, then you shouldn't talk about them. Is that the standard we're going to have? Because all the people that have ever said anything about me, I'm better than you. So I don't get what we're doing. That, that was in poor taste of Shannon Sharp. And that's why I went off on his thick tongue ass. A nigga that got buckled by his goddamn five foot nine cohort, co-host. He want to sit here and talk tough and talk thick tongue to me. 
when all I said was from my basketball knowledge, from my basketball experience, I gave my basketball opinion. I never took away from LeBron. I always said LeBron is great, but you're not going to make me think that he's what you think he is. If that's what you want me to do, fuck you. I don't think he's that. And I'm not hating. I'm not doing none of that. I'm not downing no black man. I'm not doing none of that. You guys have been having this conversation about this for a long time. And I can have the conversation as well. Being that I had firsthand knowledge of these players, yes. He's not even close to, to MJ. MJ so got dang on talented. MJ bet you on any damn thing. MJ, walking into practice, MJ, you can't hit this shot right here. I'm talking about on the other end from the hash mark. Oh, give me three shots. Cold. They ain't even ain't doing nothing but been lifting. MJ will throw it from one end to the other. And, and by the time that third shot go up, it's going in all net. Talking about the butt naked truth. Am I saying that I was better than LeBron? No. So all you little pundits can stop with that narrative. But if, there's a lot of you guys that never even played basketball that have this conversation. So you damn sure not going to have a conversation that I can't have when I played. That ain't going to work. That dog ain't going to hunt. This goddamn yard dog called me a fucking a farmer. This man that's been out of control trying to fight every damn body that talk about LeBron. Like this, this ain't even how an analyst is supposed to conduct himself. An analyst is supposed to have some integrity. But no, this nigga is a yard dog. Stop right there. You know he can't talk. Stop right there. Don't you go nowhere with that damn tractor. Stop. <laughs> Stop right there for me. Now, what did you say? How you gonna call somebody a sharecropper in your family or, or call somebody a goddamn farmer like, as a diss? And that's how you grew up, boy. Damn, boy, you been in them L.A. hills too goddamn long. You done turn into a, a, a juice head, muscle head, bodyguard. This nigga is the first analyst slash bodyguard I ever seen. This motherfucker argue on Twitter. This motherfucker argue on Instagram. LeBron can't post a damn thing without this dude being under. I mean, he don't, he don't got no days off to support LeBron. This nigga is a friend to the end of my buddy ass nigga. My buddy. If I got any friends that post up on the, God damn it, you just miss, you got to miss one post. If you got your own shit going on, you should miss one thing. This is a my buddy. This man got there and want to diss me so hard. He want to invalidate me so hard for his boo thing. Which I want to I want to publicly apologize to you, KB. I used to laugh at all the Stephen A. Scrub jokes. I don't understand the media uh, agenda trolled Scrub. So obviously now, yeah, it's so obvious. These people are weird, man. They try to force you to, to think the way they wanted you to think. I don't want to think the way you want to think. I want to have the right to my Fifth Amendment, my opinion, and I want to be able to say it. And if you don't agree with it, cool. But you don't have to goddamn talk shit to me because I have more knowledge of something than you. A thick tongue nigga that talk like he chewing on goddamn back all day. You should know you up there just to push an agenda. You ain't never played basketball at all. Do you think they want real basketball knowledge being put out? No, that's why they got two people talking basketball that don't know shit about basketball. That's why. That's why they have two people that don't know shit about basketball that's speaking about basketball. Imagine that, y'all. This is the NBA. This is supposed to be the most highest level of basketball you could think of. So you would, one would think that you want the highest minds, the highest level of thinking. That's exactly the opposite of what they want. They just want these shock jock motherfuckers. They do not want people who actually know the game because they're not going to go a script. They're not going to say everything that you need them to say. They gonna got them. They gonna talk about other things. They're not just gonna praise LeBron in this narrative of this superstar shit that they gotta have in the league. Is LeBron a great player? Absolutely. That has nothing to do with what I said. I kept it strictly basketball. 
I kept it strictly about the possession, the move that I thought and a lot of other people thought that he should have made. A lot of other great scores would have gotten a shot off. I named my opinion on those great scores. Hell, I even threw myself in that shit. <laughs> Hell, I ain't say I was going to make the motherfucker. I said I was going to get a shot off. You know what I'm saying? Words mean something. I even threw my motherfucking fast moving ass in there. I'm going to get a shot off. You know, but if you're going to give this man this much attention, if you're going to force feed LeBron down our throat every single day, even when he get his ass kicked, even when they bring the brooms out and Denver kick his ass, if the headlines are going to be about LeBron, then people can examine LeBron. You guys got this crazy thing about certain people in this world that you, it's a lot of people feel like if you speak about them, they go crazy. Like we got guys walking on earth. We can't speak about LeBron as men. Y'all women better not say shit about uh, Beyonce or Rihanna because the beehive coming for that ass. So we got like God, we got like little guys walking on earth that they can't be examined. You can't say nothing about them or it's like some troll goats that'll come and try to fuck your life up. It makes no sense. You can't even be respectful in your, in your talk. Cause I was very respectful. You can call one man a straight up bus. His life is dirt. His life is nothing. It's funny how it's all about who we like because they did not recognize I was black for 20 fucking years. And then now I say I, I'm respectful in my takes. And now I'm somehow coming at black men. You didn't know I was black for 20 motherfucking years while they throwing dirt on my goddamn name, talking crazy writing books about me that don't even make sense and i don't care i take it all i said was he's not that i never disrespected lebron i never will but in my opinion he's not that that's it but even gilbert arenas don't understand this so i want to play this part of the video because i thought gilbert was going to you know join in on the fun and pile on you know this is what Gilbert lives for. So I was trolling Gilbert the night before. So we'll get past this video because I was trolling because I know if I talk basketball, put a clip or two of him in there, he can't help himself. Like he was smiling so hard on this video. Look at how hard this nigga's smiling. I'm talking shit for the whole time. I don't think he's going to watch the highlights to know what's coming next. Like he's still on his shit, but he's talking about what he's going to do to me. I don't think he knew this highlight. Yeah, I know. And I know you think that's stupid to what I'm doing, but it, <laughs> it had the result that I wanted. I kept talking about you, boy. I wanted you to say something. And look at what you're doing right now. So regardless of what you think about the video and what you think I'm talking about, and if you think you're making a joke, I got the exact result I wanted. Gilbert Arenas to come back out running his mouth. So I don't know why you think that you're so smart if you're going to keep doing what I want you to do. <laughs> You gonna keep doing what I want you to do. You keep trying to use me, but boy, I'm goddamn playing you like a field. And you know it. Well, you don't know it. It's your ego that won't let you understand. It was coming in. Like, at this point, we've seen five highlights, four of them did the same shit. <laughs> Fucking shit got on replay. Fucking clown. I can't move. I can't walk. I can't dribble. He said I got six plays in my career. I'm gonna show y'all six of them. <laughs> hey, I can't move. I can't walk. I can't dribble. No, nah, I just don't want to go to the party. I'm not party boy. I'm not a fucking party boy. I just... <laughs> Look at his face, y'all. Look at his face. Everything I say, he's reacting to it. I'm not a fucking party boy. I'm saying all this shit to get him to react. Watch what he does. Let's see if he reacts to me saying party boy. I want to dump this goddamn ball, and I, I don't want to celebrate. I ain't going to dance. I ain't going to do that. I want to dump this motherfucker, and I want to go home tomorrow. Yeah, I don't think you was a party boy then. You, you, you were the wizard. I think you became, when you put that yellow and gold on, boy, when you got that yellow and gold jersey, ooh, ooh, ooh boy, that's what you was in them streets. Yes, yes. Yeah, you normal here, yeah. We, you only you only 20, right? Okay. You only 20. Depending on when we play, you probably still not 20. Mm -hmm. All right, that's enough of that. Let's get to the part. I trolled him. I got him out. I got him to talk about basketball and all that. But then, uh, and he showed my video. He was smirking and blushing the whole goddamn night. Look at him, look at him. He fought, he died laughing. He having a great time blushing and smirking. And... Hey, but Gil, I heard Kenyon Martin rip you a new one for wearing them little small Gucci shorts. 
I heard Kenyard Martin told you a new one for them little Bucci shorts you had on, boy. Is that true, Gil? Did Kenyon Martin rip you a new one for having these Bucci shorts on? Because I heard that on your show, Kenyon Martin was like, what the hell is that? You all oiled up in black paint and shit. So I think, I think, yeah, Kenyon Martin, I'm starting to see, they got to keep their distance from you, boy. Y'all, y'all are gonna be just co-workers in a minute. They 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 kind of they kind of see you now. <laughs> well, hold on, man. Let's get to the part where he's actually reacting to what I said. Uh, and he is gonna be confused, just like I'm confused, on what the hell was everybody so mad at. Gilbert Arena seemed to agree with. Uh, 90% or 95%, 98% of what I said are just about basketball. So let's get to it. It's, they look again. Okay, I got it. You know, reptile type shit. Play the game last night. But I must say, the bus is upset. First of all, you did not watch the Laker game last night. Or that. You're lying, sir. You did not. You, you was drunk and sleep. Okay, by the time the game came on. So you watched some. Oh, this motherfucker gonna tell me what the fuck I was doing. How, how this guy gonna object the first thing I see that he can't goddamn prove or disprove? How the first thing is I'm capping, I'm lying because I didn't want he's saying I didn't watch the game. Dumb takes by NBA Dumb Boy. Ex NBA Dumb Boy. Someone else's comment, and then you made a comment off that comment. Just let's be real. I thought the Lakers was gonna win one, but they got the brooms put on. That was the brooms right there. And so I discovered that LeBron, you're not that. Bro. I'm sorry, I, I can't hate you say it. Uh, uh, you're a stat sheet junkie. You're a bad boy when it comes to stats. Throughout history, people are gonna, you know, the little nerds are gonna look up your stat line, and they're gonna say he got to be the greatest player to ever play. Hey, who car is this? He got a rental? Or he, I know he ain't getting a new car. This is rental. Game, man. People who actually play are gonna know that's bullshit. I have never seen a guy of your caliber, a supposed caliber, you don't even get a shot off. You made. Why is this nigga worried about cars and dumb shit? Just shut up, boy, and watch the goddamn video. You made me bet my money. <laughs> Who'd you bet? It's a joke, Gil. Don't you see I laugh right after I said it? I bust out laughing right after I said it, bro. Jesus. Huh. <laughs> Who, who'd you bet, Kwame? What money? Which, huh? What, what money did you bet, Kwame? We know damn well. We know. I I know. I we can all put money on you. You ain't you ain't betting with the Lakers. All right. <laughs> we know your hatred for LeBron James. Okay. All right. So we know. You. So before he watches the video, he said, "I hate LeBron James." So let's see if I say something that sounds like I hate LeBron James. You're not betting. Yo. Now he puts out a narrative to my hate LeBron James. I'm like, I've never said that negative about LeBron James. I don't even think that this take was negative about LeBron James. I think these are the most sensitive lying motherfuckers in the world. money super uh, first of all it's the 25th i mean shit, you probably wait i don't know when when did this come out you probably did get that super chat money afforded my money i at least thought lakers second you're gonna win this game you made me bet my money and you mean to tell me that you didn't have the nerve to tell me you were just gonna run in there and pump fake pump fake pump fake and so they edited out the part where I laughed. I said, you made me bet my money. <laughs> I turned and I laughed because it was a joke. I didn't even bet on the goddamn game. 
I didn't bet on no game. It was all a joke. But the stuff that I was saying about basketball, that was my true opinion. Then beg for the ref to bail your ass out again. How many times we got to see you flop and you owe that person $30 for that bill? You flopped and knocked the person bill out their goddamn hand. Never one time I played with MJ. I never seen MJ flop all the way to the goddamn sideline. Have you? Look at him. Like he loved this shit. The nigga. Watch him. Watch him. Nerve to tell me he was just going to run in there. And pump fake, pump fake, pump fake, and beg for the ref to bail your ass out again. How many times we got to see you flop and you owe that person $30 for that bill? You flop and knock the person bill out their goddamn hand. Never one time I played with MJ. I never seen MJ flop all the way to the goddamn sideline. Have you seen that? I seen this nigga flop all. This nigga want to be in the Matrix or something. Nigga, my, maybe you need to do movies from here on out and go do the Matrix sequel so you can flop your ass all the way out of bounds and knock somebody goddamn drink out their goddamn hand. But this don't make no sense. Hey, I'm pretty sure that drink was about $30. <laughs> now, Gilbert don't even like me, and he can laugh at the fucking joke. But I guess you can't make a joke about Kang. He did flop. He flopped like a motherfucker. He went so far of a flop, he got damn stumbled all the way out of bounds. So I made a joke about him flopping. That's that's no hate. That's a joke. I'm, <laughs> I'm pretty sure that the expensive ass drink on the floor was about thirty damn dollars. So okay, I'm with you on that one. This don't make no sense. Now you're gonna come back at thirty nine, and they're gonna try to carry you to the playoffs in the finals again. Do you know what that's gonna look like? That's gonna be horrible. Trying to carry a thirty nine year old aging, failing superstar, talking about. Yeah. Okay. We know that we know who that came from. By all this money he spent on his body. Uh I don't give a damn if you spend two million on your body. They ain't gonna give you no new hamstring. They ain't gonna give you no new knee. Do, do they get a new hamstring as you get older? Do they give out new knees? Yeah, the answer is no, because if it was, I would try to get one of them shits. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie. Then how much money money ain't gonna be father of time? Boy, God is good. And father of time is gonna get all of it. And well technically, uh you're right, but yeah. It's, it's keeping his career a little bit longer, which means if he's spending $2 million and he can stay in longer, that means there's still more money to get. So, you know, to spend $2 million to, to be healthy an extra year where you can get $20 million, that is a great investment. And so it don't matter how much money you spend, but you not that, LeBron. I saw last night, you not that, bro. You are a great player. You, you got good stats. You played longer than anybody. You didn't like the failing superstar part? Failing, it means his body is failing. We're talking about his body. I said, it don't matter how much money you spend, his body is going to fail him. I said, father of time gets us all. We're not saying he's a failure. We're talking about he's 38 years old. Body is going to fail on him next year if he's going to try to get layups the entire season in threes. That's my opinion, brother. Somebody, you a bad motherfucker, but you not that. I played with Kobe. I played with a lot. Play now they said I bashed this man, and I said you are a great player. First thing out the gate, you are a great player. First words out the gate was he's a great player. When I was talking about his body, yeah, you, you're aging. Your body's gonna fail. You're a superstar, but. He's not what they're trying to create him to be. That's a lot of pressure for him to come back, turning 39 to be some face of the league at 39 years old. That doesn't make sense. You are a great player. But I bashed him now. They're saying I bashed his brother. I started off, you are a great player. I saw last night, you not that, bro. 
you are a great player. You you got good stats. You played longer than anybody. You a bad motherfucker, but you not that. I played with Kobe. I played with a. I played with Richard Hamilton. He would have got a shout out. You a great player. You a bad motherfucker. All these words that I'm using. But I just said gave my opinion on this quote conversation that everyone else keeps having. So everyone else can have a goat conversation when it comes to LeBron, but a person who played with Kobe Bryant and Michael Jordan can't enter into the conversation unless he was better than LeBron James. That doesn't make any sense. That was the dumbest comeback from Shannon Sharp I've ever seen. You are a fairy. If you lose more than you win, he's four and six in those finals. No, I wouldn't call him that. It's just the, uh, the other team won that day. That's all I would say. Hell, Gilbert Arenas would have got a shot off right there. Facts. I agree. I, I would have got a shot off. You didn't even get a shot off. We don't even know if you would have hit the goddamn shot. You ain't even get it off. I used to watch. Where's your little touch move? You probably be the best scorer in the game. You got all you. Wait, this is what this video. Was what made everybody mad? Well, he didn't have that smoke for Eddie Griffin because he feels like I'm a soft target. He feels like he can say whatever he wants, and he did. He went up there and got real disrespectful. He feels like he can take it there with me because they took it there with me for 20 years. That's why I took it right back with his little big, thick tongue ass, sounding like a fucking mule or cow every damn day he's trying to talk he's thinking that he's more important than what he actually is he's a fucking football player that they're letting talk basketball because they don't want any real basketball information out it's clear to see they hire a bunch of motherfuckers and put them up under clutch sports management and all of them just praise lebron so th this is right there for everybody to fucking see how the hell you got Two people talking sports. The worldwide leader in sports talk never played fucking sports. A damn football player now thinks he has more clout and more validity than an actual NBA player that has played alongside, shared the locker room with both of the people that I spoke about. That's asinine to me. Whether you think I was good or not does not mean I didn't witness what I witnessed. So I know a little bit more what I'm talking about than you. And I'm in, I'm in the chat in this video, like, yep, I didn't disrespect this dude. I'm like, I was talking basketball. And he look, even Gilbert Arenas can't understand what the fuck is wrong with Shay Shay. Where's your move? Like, Jokic can play till he got down there 50. Jokic don't even get off the ground. He pick, he roll, he do a little floater. That nigga can do that till he's 50 years fucking old. He just trot down the court, do his little floater, throw it up, or do his little three, and get on back. LeBron, why didn't you work on your other shit, bro? I know I'm a bust, so everybody's going to say, oh, why are you bust? Cool. I'm a fan now. I'm a basketball enthusiast. I'm a fan. I played this game, and I watched MJ, I watched Kobe work on driving right, getting to a spot. You were supposed to get to a spot right there, brother. You were supposed to bump him. You six foot eight. They can't even see Ten. He's six for ten. Just, I mean, it helps your argument. Six for ten. Uh, thanks, you. <laughs> Look how bad this nigga want to prove me wrong. This nigga got six for ten. It helps your argument, which it does. But thank, thanks, bro. So he's six ten, and all I am talking about is basketball. I did not disrespect LeBron's legacy, did not bring up his legacy. All I'm talking about is the shot selection and how he should have went about getting a shot. That's it. But this is what, is this the video that actually got He said, uh, Shannon doing to you what Skip did to him on TV. Shannon gave an opinion on Brady and Skip personally attacked his career. 
you gave your opinion. Absolutely. The same thing that, that he was done, you know, done to him on national TV, he goes try to do it to me. And then he got himself roasted, got himself flamed. Shannon Sharp to, to, to respond. Because I mean, I mean, four minutes in, he, he ain't doing what he usually do. Just start, you know, telling. Someone says, Kwame, bro, you threw shots at him being the GOAT. Uh, I didn't throw shots. I just came out with it emphatically and said he's not close uh, with those two men that I played with. Like, it's not, it's like no joke. It's not even close. I understand the points and all the plan for a long time. I get it, but uh, it's not, he's not even in the same conversation, in my opinion. He just, he's a transition player. He's very good in transition. He's learned how to shoot a three pointer, but his stage of his game, uh, with what I saw in the shot selection and how he went about his business, uh, I wouldn't put him in the same category as MJ and Kobe. That's just my opinion. I don't got to be crazy for my opinion. There's a lot of people believe that LeBron is better than Kobe, Michael, and everybody put together. I don't call them crazy. I don't disrespect them. I have a right to my opinion. So to say that I'm a hater, to say that I'm this, to say I'm bitter, all these things because I won't say what you say, that makes no sense. But from what I've seen in those practices and those locker rooms and how people – even though they did, they were afraid of Kobe, but they still respected his work ethic so much that people would fly in to work out with him. Yeah, I, I, I see that. I see a difference. I'm sorry. I sound like a Karen. Okay, that's what's up. You had the right to your opinion. Telling everybody they ain't shit and they some bitch ass niggas. <laughs> so he ain't done that so far. Now, this is his narrative. He said, I just start, I be starting off just telling people they stupid and bitch ass niggas. Uh, no, I have a video, two videos up about John Morant prior to the gun situation. So it's like his narrative, I don't get it. I don't understand why he tries to run with this narrative. Yes, I called John Morant stupid and dumb. That decision that he did for the second time, that was stupid and dumb. If my son would have did that, I would have said, boy, you be acting like a jackass. You stupid and dumb for doing that dumb shit. I sure would. I forgot. You guys only want to hear people talk to you not so nice and give you participation trophies. And even when you're doing something wrong, tell you that it's going to be okay. Even when it's not, it is not okay. See the rim when you get up there. Bump that motherfucker going left and rise up. You right there. But you were looking for a bailout again. I've watched so many good players, including myself, work on these same moves. Tracy McGrady, he going to get to a spot. He going to rise up. What fucking move you worked on, Kwame? Mm. What move you worked on, Kwame? Which one? Mm. Rebounding, playing defense on Shaq. <laughs> But the only move that we've seen thus far, that's. So, yeah, Gil is going to take his personal digs. That's what he do, you know. But at the end of the day, he's going to finish this video out, and he's not going to understand why Shannon Sharp did what he did. Consistent is you keeping Shaq out the motherfucking lane. Is that what you were? in that goddamn shot if you would have missed. You wanted the ref to do something for you. You went and yelling at the goddamn ref once a fucking year. It's a damn shame, man. This is what it looks like when, to me, and a lot of other people, when they push your career through. It's guys out there that live for those moments. They live for those moments to score in those moments. Kobe Bryant would have lived for that moment. Kobe Bryant would have probably looked at that nigga, rose up for a three and won the game. That's what great people do. You can't say that you're great. You got to do great things. You got to make the impossible, the impossible possible. That's wait. So he's so this is all about LeBron not getting a shot up. That's what this is about. Like LeBron. 
Ding, 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 ding. Bingo. All over LeBron not getting a shot up. I had a take on that. And they start making it seem like I was tarnishing his legacy and every damn thing else. When all I talked about is he ain't whatever I trying to make him out to be. LeBron not getting the shot up. All this back and forth is about LeBron not getting a shot up. Okay. It's where greatness lies. Not no nigga that's just driving to the basket looking at the referee to bail him out. Anybody can do that shit. Jimmy Butler ain't driving to the rim looking for nobody to bail him out. Hey, so, hey salute to Jimmy Butler. God damn that boy playing. I'm talking about that nigga giving you everything he got. He ain't getting no accolades for it. They finally going to have to start speaking to Jimmy Butler. Jimmy Butler is like that. That nigga Jimmy Butler would have drove to a spot, bumped the guy, and rolls up and won that and tied that fucking game up. But LeBron want to drive that old ass shit, drive into the basket. LeBron, you got to get, you have to get the touch shit in your game. You can't go to the free throw line. Yeah, well, truth be told, it's probably too, it's too late for that shit right there. Getting touches. And... Like Paul Pierce would do, you can't go to the free throw. So right here, uh, Gilbert Arenas didn't say, hey, Kwame, that's bullshit. Uh, he has all the touch shit. He has all of that. That's BS. He has all the touch stuff. He's LeBron. Gilbert said, it's too late for all that touch stuff. KB, you talking straight facts. LeBron never had that killer instinct Jordan and Kobe had. Yeah. Uh, I, and I'm not taking away from his greatness. I still think LeBron is great. But if you're going to talk this whole woke talk every other day, the guy that was in the locker room with both of those quotes, it's not even close. I don't give a fuck how many stats these jokers keep bringing up. It's not close. But Gilbert Arenas did not say that, hey, Kwame, you're wrong right here. He already has all this touch stuff. What are you talking about? He can go to the elbow and he can go to the free throw line, back a guy down and then lean back off one leg and, and hit that shot anytime he wants to. He can do all these things Paul Pierce, uh, Dirk Nowitzki, and all these guys did when they got older. But Gilbert Arena said, no, it's too late for that shit. I wonder if uh, Shannon's going to attack Gilbert. Truth be told, it's probably too, it's too late for that shit right there. Getting touches. And like Paul Pierce would do. You can't go to the free throw line and then drive through the basket, bullying over little small point guards like you did with Steph Curry. That was terrible. Steph Curry would beat this guy to the spot. He would bull over him and try to get a layup and then give him a foul for that bullshit. You got to learn to get a guy to a spot at the free throw line and rise up over him like Paul Pierce. No wonder Paul Pierce said he was better than you. So Paul Pierce, anybody he got to that free throw line and below, they was a boy, they was a done deal. They was a cook fucking goose. In the league, you're supposed to get to a spot. Some of the best scorers, once they get to a certain spot, it's over with. There's nothing you can do. When we used to game plan for these type of players, we used to say, hey, don't let them get to that spot. Bump them, root them off that spot. LeBron, where's the spot that you get to that everybody that know it's a bucket? Oh, when the late, when the refs give you a foul. That's your spot. When you get a foul call. Because this shit don't make no sense. Four championships in my ass. We don't give a fuck about that. We're talking about players who you can get that ball to and you know that's going to be a bucket. Kareem, that's a bucket. Cap. MJ, that's a bucket. Cap. Larry Bird, that's a bucket. Cap. This guy, where's his moves that get you that bucket? Okay. Now, here's where Gilbert disagrees. He said if they would have gave the ball to Larry Bird, he wouldn't have scored. They said if they would have gave the ball to MJ, he wouldn't have scored. Now, I disagree with Gilbert on that. Uh, I think MJ definitely would have scored. Um. Uh, he would have got a shot off. Now, notice I wasn't in the beginning when I was talking about this. I was just talking about getting a shot off. He was supposed to do a move that get a shot off. So I, I spoke about getting to a spot, having that in your bag for that type of situation where you need to take a guy to a spot and rise up. That's all I said. So for somebody to get that offended by me saying that, and start attacking me in my whole career when you nigga, you ain't even play basketball. Don't even make sense. Hey, 
the problem the only problem i see here is you're comparing a 38 year old man to guys when they were younger because uh larry bird didn't play the 38 jordan wasn't playing at 38 well he came back at 38 but he wasn't doing what lebron did at 38 uh, i don't know how many game winners Let's brother say anyone with half a brain, eyes, and not on their knees, 24-7 can see LeBron isn't the GOAT, not even top five, to be honest. He has longevity stats. I mean, yeah, he played over 20 years. <laughs> but that's why they're going to keep pushing that stat narrative. Most of these players are out of the league 10, 12, 13 years. He's going on to play 20-plus 20, 20 years. he made at 38 but i'm sure it wasn't a lot pretty sure it wasn't none pretty sure. and at this part this is when he starts defending lebron because i haven't said anything disrespectful about lebron so he didn't see anything disrespectful but of course he has to defend lebron so he's talking about game winners and all kind of other stuff that has nothing to do with what i said Nothing to do with getting to a spot whatsoever. So, hey, I don't know. For sure, it's probably one all-star game. Kareem, I mean, the nigga averaged 10 and 7 at that age. So, I, I'm, I'm trying to figure out. Like, you can't compare a 38-year-old to guys when they were 20. And they always move the goalposts when you're talking about LeBron. They always talk about stats. They, that's their go-to. This is why you know this is phony baloney. Their go-to is always the stats. Their go-to is always the stats. They don't want anybody to catch those stats or even be close to those stats. I'm talking about getting to a spot and rising up and shooting the ball. Why are we talking about his stats? Why are we talking about his legacy? Why are we talking about any of that? I didn't bring up his legacy. I didn't bring up his stats. I said, based on that play that I saw, he don't have that in his bag in order that he shouldn't even got the ball, in my opinion. I would have gave the ball to Austin Reeves. And I didn't compare them. Where's his moves that get you that bucket? Kobe, you give him that ball, you get a bucket. Yeah, but Kobe wasn't playing at 38. Hurt Nabisky, you give him that ball, you get a bucket. Not at 38. Okay. He don't give a damn, he fading off one leg. He giving you a bucket. Look at Luca. you getting a bucket. He's 20. Look at Jokic that he played last night. The motherfucker gave you great buckets. He did a step back, paid away three. Did you say we're going to have to wait until those guys are 38 and then we're going to... um. We're gonna we're gonna revisit this one. <laughs> I, you know, I hope we I hope we both still going at that shit by then. But uh, it's it's hard to it's it's really hard to like really agree with what you're saying because at 38, none of the guys you've named have done any of this. So you know you can't really compare. Now we talking about age. We talking about at 38 now. <laughs> he always got an excuse, not at 38. Yeah, to retire. Jordan would have got to that spot at 38. Yes, he did. Jordan had 45 on his 40th birthday. I have the shoes to prove it. He signed them for me. He had 45 points on his 40th birthday. He's going to get to a spot. <clears throat> That's all MJ had at that point. He didn't have any lift. He was just turning over people and shooting and just getting to a spot and rising up. He wasn't blowing by you. He wasn't that fast anymore. And uh, LeBron's uh, foot speed for us downhill for us running is still there. But his side to side and being able to blow by people is not there. So now you get him in a half court set, 
you see all this bull rushing and and and, and a, a lot of energy needing to be exerted just to get a bucket. With MJ, it's bum bum, he's going up. And MJ had bad knees and all. He, he was getting his knees drained and all that. Fingers sliced up. What? And MJ wasn't playing with uh, two, three top uh, 75 players. You know, he was playing with what y'all say is a bus. So MJ didn't have the supporting cast as a LeBron. LeBron every year go out and recruit. They're going to recruit a whole new set of uh, great players for LeBron for next year. This is what always happens. It's a sweepstake to get LeBron players he need every single year. And it turns out it don't matter who you put them with. It's always they fault. You got one of the great players in Russell Westbrook and everything was his fault. You got AD on the team. Everything his fault. Everything somebody else's fault. So if you're going to have the argument about age and moving the goalposts about age, uh, MJ at that age didn't have the caliber of players that LeBron had. And and my belief, if he did, uh, he would have he would have probably won that game. That's just my belief. They would have did in that moment of time because they've never been in that moment of time. Those guys were already washed. The mother did. He said, Boom. "When it was time to be great, Yoko was great." Like if you're if, like, look, listen, I will understand if you're saying that, hey, you should have got these shots up and did all that cool you can't compare him to other people that were doing this when they were 20 because he was 20 once right uh you were you saying that when he was 20 averaging 31 and doing all that shit so you can't you can't use those excuses now comparing what kobe would did when you played with kobe when kobe was 20 something kobe wasn't 20 something when i played with him gil you gotta have to fact check that Kobe was in his 30s when I played with him. Right, that's when you played with me, 20 something. Like, I'm a 38 motherfucker. I was with you. That's how you separate greatness. When it was time to be great, he was great. He did shit that you like. I look like, what the fuck did he just do? This seven foot guy just stepped back, fade away three pointer at a time where you needed that shit. And it went in. Where was your greatness at, LeBron? When they needed a bucket, that man drove to the basket and he got his shot off between two people. Where was your greatness? I lost my goddamn money. I, I, boy, if I had a LeBron jersey, I'd burn that bitch right now. Lost my damn money, bet with you talking about black power and all this shit. I, man. Well, <laughs> I'm just playing. I ain't gonna burn your jersey, but I don't think you like that no more. I really don't. Because well, I mean, just I had to look up dirt average 14 at that same age. It's 14. You know, just FYI. So I don't think Dirk would have did any of that at that age. To see you not even get a shot at him, huh? I ain't like. Now, mind you, these LeBron James fans are such stat talkers and such stat lovers that the point that I'm making is that he should have got to a spot and got a. Kwame gave a whole generation of young men in the South hope that nothing is impossible. I will never forget when you got drafted in 2001. It was like we all got drafted in the South. Salute to you. Appreciate the super chat. But the media still tells us LeBron is elite at 38. Yeah, he's giving him the excuse that he's 38, but they're still telling you he's the growth at 38. I'm saying he's a great player for what his past accomplishments and some of the things that he's done now. But it's amazing that he was able to, to hold up this long. But um, if we're going to put him in the quote category, being around those two gentlemen, I just don't. If I'm offering up my opinion, just like so many others have given theirs, he's not that. Kill makes no sense. You're talking about getting to a spot, and he's acting like a 38 Kobe and MJ couldn't do that. MJ hit game winners on Washington with you. Exactly. All I talked about was getting to a spot. 
and all real listen it's a score back home it's a dude that scored he like in, he almost 50 years old and but he was he's been a scorer his whole life his name jack he's a guy anybody that's from brunswick know this is a guy named jack ball head he can have a big belly whatever he's going to get to a spot and he's gonna rise up on you and he's gonna get the bucket that's how much he's been scoring throughout his game he didn't make the league Hell, he could have went to college and all kind of stuff, but he chose the streets. But even to this day, if you see this guy play, he almost 50 years old. He's going to get to a spot. That's all he got. Get to a spot. He's going to bump you, and he's going to shoot. Everybody knows that's how you play ball. When you're playing against a younger cat, you got to slow him down. You got to hit him. You got to bump him and get to that spot. So I don't know what I don't know what's going on. Gil Cap and Kareem was averaging 22, 23 points at 38. Yeah, you know. Gil, uh, Gil is going to, he's going to toe that line. Mike definitely did, did it at 38, 39, 40 with the Wizards. Gil is tripping. LeBron doesn't have the skills to fall uh, back on. Great video. And that's all I said. They just want to force feed people that he's this quote and if you don't agree um if you don't agree with him then they want to jump on you well i don't know this to be true i'm just reading the super chat he's been on steroids Leroy is the king of epo that's not my thoughts that's just me reading out a super chat i don't know that to be true but I, it is interesting that uh, his yard dog had no smoke for Chell Sonnen. Why didn't he call Chell Sonnen? Why he ain't come out and say, Chell Sonnen, you a fucking loser. You, you've you been on these drugs and this, this, and that. You want to try to take a black man down? Why he ain't come at Chell Sonnen? Why is it mum is the word when Chell Sonnen came out? Now, that's going at somebody's career. That's going. That's directly going at somebody's career. That's directly going at somebody's legacy. All I said was he's not that. He don't have he doesn't have the skill set like Kobe and uh MJ had. And I was there to see it. So anybody that don't agree with that opinion, and I have first eye not bird's eye knowledge of this, then that's just you and your feelings. But if you're gonna be so defense of LeBron, and why haven't you defended the fact that Chell Sonnen uh, has alleged that he's on EPOs? Cause if if that's the case, then uh, his career would be at risk from being an asterisk by it. Everything he's worked for would be an asterisk by it. But you never said nothing about that, but you're going to come at a guy who just said he didn't get, he don't know how to get to a spot and shoot. I'm kind of confused here. I'm kind of confused. I would think that's a more direct shot at my brand with a guy coming out and maybe potentially lying on LeBron like this. He said, without a doubt, we have the same drug dealer. And I'm like, wait a minute. And I'm thinking there was going to be some lawsuits rolled out like a motherfucker. But it was nothing. Kareem averaged 25 and 9 at 38, won the title with MVP. Damn, Gil, people, see? And that's the thing. This is why you got to have these conversations on YouTube. Because then y'all can see the media bias. Y'all can see how there's a push to make this thing true about LeBron. They'll, they don't care if they lie on another black man. They don't care if they disrespect one. They don't care. If I would have said the same thing about MJ, nobody would have had a problem. But because it's about their beloved LeBron, everybody has a problem. That's sad. Yeah, I ain't see one media member even mention Chell Sonnen's name. It's like it was a ghost town. It's like everybody don't say nothing. Please, don't nobody say it. Don't even mention Chell Sonnen. Because if you mention Chell Sonnen, then it gives it legs. Then more pe people will mention Chell Sonnen. But the, the passionate response that Shannon Sharp has given towards me and the disrespect that he's given towards me, it's just making me wonder why didn't uh shannon sharp have this same energy for chell son is he just afraid of every white boy in america now chell son is a bad motherfucker he got a reason to be scared of chell son hell i'm scared of chell son chell son and kick your motherfucking ass but i'm just saying he can say something back over the computer 
He defend, he defend LeBron against every fucking body. I'm talking about you say LeBron name, he'll come, goddamn Shannon Sharp. And he put the police outfit on. And he jump up. And he thought right there. Stop, stop, stop right there. I'm LeBron security. I mean, stop. Stop, stop right there. Don't you go nowhere. But why didn't he do anything with Chael Sonny? Huh? Why he ain't say nothing to Chael Sonny? Yeah, why you ain't say chill, chill, stop right there, stop, stop, stop right there, chill, stop. Don't you move, chill. Hold on now, Skip, hold on, Skip. Stop right there, chill. Now, you're not going to be talking about LeBron. Now, I can't beat your motherfucking ass, but you ain't going to talk about LeBron. He had no smoke. No smoke for a man that came at his bestie in the worst way. That attacked his legacy and brand in the worst way. But all I said was this man don't know how to get to a spot and he come at me like that. Things that make you go, hmm. Things that make you go, hmm. Yeah, he said he want to pour honey on LeBron. Yeah, I showed that yesterday. He said he wanted to pour honey on LeBron. But for a man that want to pull honey on LeBron, why he ain't say nothing to Chael Sonnen? Huh? Hey, we need to make a rug out of this shit or, or a t-shirt. You can make this into a rug. I'm going to make this into a t-shirt. Stop right there. Stop. Stop right there. Stop. Don't you go nowhere. Stop. <laughs> This nigga Gil be lying like a motherfucker, boy. I want to know if Gil worked for Clutch Sports. Stop right there. Stop. Stop. Don't you go nowhere. Stop. A shot off. I'm not talking about averages. I'm not talking about his greatness. I'm not talking about his age. I'm not. Well, I did speak about his age because I said I would have gave it to a younger, more capable player. With, with a bigger bag and a more variety at that time of the game. Someone just gave LeBron the ball because his name is LeBron. Uh, Dirk would have would have hit Joe. I on. He didn't. Uh, he didn't get a shot. In. But you was waiting on the ref to save you. No, that's true. I, I, I'm mad he didn't get a shot and. You're right. He was probably trying to get the foul so he can go to the free throw line, which would have been fucking horrible too. So Gilbert says, you're right, you're right. He was probably trying to get to the free throw line. And if he would have got fouled, Gilbert doesn't think that LeBron would have made both free throws. So I wonder if Shannon Sharp is going to attack Gilbert Arenas. Gilbert Arenas just said that he was probably looking for a foul. So he agreed on this one. Salute Kwame Media, uh, wake up the world, see you. Uh, team sports is just uh, that, a team sport, shaking my head. No, this is LeBron sport. That's what they trying to make. But, uh, yeah, Gilbert, this is what he actually thinks. So, Gilbert, you about to get backlash, buddy. Uh, Malone got to a spot. MJ and Kobe were technicians. That's all I said, bro. They mad as hell. Kobe groomed Paul Gasol, MJ groomed Pippen, while LeBron rearranges every team he goes to. LeBron to go to flopping. Well, I don't know who this is, but I'm just reading these out. Salute to you, salute to you. But yeah, look at what Gilbert said. But you was waiting on the refs to save you. That's true. I, I, I'm mad he didn't get a shot, and you're right. He was probably trying to get the foul so he can go to the free throw line, which would have been fucking horrible, too, at that point. So it was just. So Gilbert Arenas agrees. He said, yes, I think he was trying to get a foul. So Shannon Sharp, are you going to now attack Gilbert Arenas? 
Or are you going to now say Gilbert Arenas is a, a joke? He brought guns to the locker room because he says he didn't bring them. Are you going to now attack Gilbert Arenas? Because Gilbert Arenas just agreed with me. Shay Shay, here you go. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rewind it back so you can hear Gilbert ag agreeing. No, that's true. I, uh -uh. I ain't like that shit. It looked like you don't believe on your own hype. You're supposed to get a shot. You're supposed to show us who you are. But you was waiting on the refs to save you. No, that's true. I, I, I'm mad he didn't get a shot. And you're right. He was probably trying to get the foul so he can go to the free throw line, which would have been fucking horrible, too, at that point. So it was just bad. It was just bad decision making. Right? You're right. Fuck it. I wish they would have called the foul. We'll see if you can make the free throw. <laughs> <laughs> because greatness is. <laughs> Look at that laugh, man. I'm telling you what it is. I say shit that these guys want to say. If if I was saying something that was not true, he wouldn't be laughing like this. He already said uh, he, you know, it probably that shit probably wouldn't have went well. So he literally thinks LeBron would have missed the free throw. Look at that. He's laughing. He's laughing like a motherfucker. I said, I wish he would have got fouled. So we see how that goes. So he wish he would have said this shit. I wish they would have called the foul to see if you can make the free throw. <laughs> because greatness. Is <laughs> Look, he even like saying sitting out like this. <laughs> because <laughs> I wish they would have called the foul to see if you can make the free throw. <laughs> <laughs> because greatness is <laughs> <laughs> that's low key fucked up because that was shit. I would have been mad too. <laughs> I'm supposed to do great shit at that time, and that wasn't great. You just drove to the basket, nigga, pick your cookie. No, no, that's sad. That the league pushed Asian superstars so bad. They want this superstar bullshit so bad that they're gonna try this man out here again next year and talk championship bullshit. When really, uh, to me, Austin Reeves should have got that ball. Austin Reeves been going to get buckets all year long. This is why LeBron James. I was complaining Austin Reeves was taking the ball out of bounds. Like I, I wouldn't have had Austin Reeves take the ball. I told y'all, these guys love my basketball takes. <laughs> These guys love my basketball tape. They love it. They just wish they would say the shit. They love my basketball tape. Ball out of bounds. I would have had Schroeder take the ball out of bounds. I have another shooter just in case. Because the play before that, if Austin Reeves, if Schroeder would have took the ball out, Austin Reeves would have been in the spot. So when he did pass it to Schroeder, it would have been Austin the state, and Austin probably would have took that shot. So. To me, don't want to get coached by veteran coaches. Every year they get a rookie coach or a first-year coach or an inexperienced coach that they can't stand up to LeBron. Uh, Phil Jackson would have gave him that goddamn ball. You can see Gilbert's head is, is, is his mind and brain is turning because I said something that he couldn't say anything against. LeBron James, after Paul Silas, was all first-year coaches, all rookie coaches. He even, uh, uh, he got Spolster in Miami. All one, two-year coaches. And he they never put him around a coach that could stand up to him and had some type of legacy and backbone. It was always a situation so they can have an out, an excuse, someone to blame it on. So he's sitting there thinking like, huh, we just said some shit that we can't even fucking say anything about. Because this is absolutely true. Why did they ever, why wouldn't they ever put a uh, No, because it's coming from your, your sorry ass. Well, you got to get over that. That's your bad. Get out your feelings. Put a legendary coach around LeBron. 
That's probably because he thinks he's a coach himself. Darvin Ham, first year coach. If they didn't get to where they went to, guess who fought it would have been? Darvin Ham. Guess who they were blaming earlier in the season? Darvin Ham. You got to go off the ebb and flow of the game. And Phil Jackson know that LeBron would have gave him that guy. A first-year coach or, to me, don't want to get coached by veteran coaches. Every year they get a rookie coach or a first-year coach or an inexperienced coach that they can't stand up to LeBron. Uh, Phil Jackson would have gave him that goddamn ball. You got to go off the ebb and flow of the game. And Phil Jackson know that LeBron right now, with his foot speed, can't go out and create a bucket like that. So, If you look at Gilbert's face, he's agreeing with everything I'm saying. He's turning his head to the side like, hmm, damn. Well, well, I got to give him that one. Even though he's a LeBron supporter, he cannot lie about the facts. It's a weird situation that a guy has never got coached by a Hall of Fame or legendary coach. Uh, Phil Jackson with the game coach or a first year to me don't want to get coached by veteran coaches. Every year they get a rookie coach or a first year coach or an inexperienced coach that they can't stand up to LeBron. Uh, Phil Jackson would have gave him that goddamn ball. You got to go off the ebb and flow of the game. And Phil Jackson know that LeBron right now, with his foot speed, can't go out and create a bucket like that. So with that many seconds, I'm not giving him that ball. I'm giving that ball to Austin Reed or that boy Hibachi. Or what's his name? <laughs> he think he playing with me. <laughs> hey, brother, I, I wasn't playing, okay? Hibachi wasn't playing. God damn. Get me off your mind. Okay? I'm not playing Kwame Brown. I'm not dead. All right? Hibachi, Hibachi is not dead. Okay? I'm watching just like you. Damn. I'm on his mind. On your mind, boy. He want he want old Hibachi to come out there and hit some shots for the Lakers, boy. Hey, thank you. I appreciate you, boy. Now this is Gilbert's way of deflecting because he knows he really can't chime in. He loves to talk, but he really can't chime in and say anything because everything I'm saying is true. So you know, all he does is wait for a spot to be a comic relief joke. But at the end of the day, he's here. He was here to see what the fuss is about to, you know, pretty much scold me for being wrong or seeing what the issue is. But then he actually agreed with every damn thing I said. So this comic relief joke is just to stay on the good graces of LeBron. So we get it. Yeah, we understand. But your body language and your face said it all. You know I'm telling the truth. Austin Reeves have been in this spot. So when he did pass it to Schroeder, it would have been Austin the state and Austin probably would have took that shot. So. To me, don't want to get coached by veteran coaches. Every year they get a rookie coach or a first-year coach or an inexperienced coach that they can't stand up to LeBron. Uh, Phil Jackson would have gave him that goddamn ball. You got to go off the ebb and flow of the game. And Phil Jackson know that LeBron right now, with his foot speed, can't go out and create a bucket like that. So with that many seconds, I'm not giving him that ball. I'm giving that ball to Austin Reeves or that boy Hibachi. Or what's his name? <laughs> he think he playing with me. <laughs> hey, brother, I, I wasn't playing, okay? Hibachi wasn't playing. God damn. Get me off your mind. Okay? I'm not playing Kwame Brown. I'm not dead. All right? Hibachi, Hibachi is not dead. Okay? I'm watching just like you. Damn. I'm on his mind. I'm on your mind, boy. He want he wanted old Hibachi to come out there and hit some shots for the Lakers, boy. Hey, thank you. I appreciate you, boy. I would have got that motherfucker and shot that bitch. You right, goddammit. Watch him more. I'm giving them the ball. They're young. They're athletic. You go get it off the glass. Let one of them young guys sh uh, shine. And if you think I'm lying, Phil Jackson let Tony Kukoc shoot the last shot as a rookie with Scottie Pippen there for years. Yeah, he was, he was stupid for that. We, we cussed his ass out back then, too. I'm not even going to lie. Now he's just talking, because why would he be stupid for that when Tony Kukoc hit the shot? Tony Kukoc actually hit the fucking shot. What did he say? Phil Jackson was stupid for that. <laughs> if you want me to, I could drop the link and you could tell me why I sound like a stupid hater. If you would like.
I could drop the link. I got about 15 minutes. You can tell me why I sound like a stupid hater. Up to you. And if you if everybody said, oh, he's gonna get the ball to Austin Reed because LeBron the goat. No, that ain't got nothing to do with it. You gotta go off the ebb and flow of the game. That Austin Reed boy been getting buckets. He can create his own shot better than LeBron right now. LeBron does the same thing over again. Drop his head, drive to the basket right, drop his head, drive to the basket left, or shoot a long three. I don't need that. <laughs> that's, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. <laughs> At the end of the game. Hey, this is what the beef started over. Just this. This is shit. <laughs> that's, that's it. it. Better than LeBron. So Gilbert Arenas agreed with everything I said about his basketball ability. I'm talking basketball. Gilbert doesn't even understand why this is a big thing. He said, this is what they did to take on. This is what they did to take on. Drop his head, drive to the basket right, drop his head, drive to the basket left, or shoot a long three. I don't need that. <laughs> that's, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> shit. <laughs> At the end of the game. Hey, this is what the beef started over. Just this, this is shit. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's it. Drop his head better than LeBron right now. LeBron does the same thing over again. Drop his head, drive to the basket right, drop his head, drive to the basket left, or shoot a long three. I don't need that. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> uh so this is a dude momo right here so let me read this out and i'm gonna bring him up he was the first one that said he wanted to leak uh braun fans and Car uh carnello carmelo fans canelo fans are the most disrespectful fans ever they they, are, they arguments are always hypocritical and they disrespect when you disagree fanatics yeah Last thing, Kareem also played in the finals till he was 41. Wow. Dang. Kareem also played in the finals until he was 41. Holy moly donut shot. Uh, thank you, Styles by Hustle the Locks. Appreciate all the super chats. All right, let me let him up. Yo. Yo, what up, man? How you doing? What's going on? All right. How do I sound like a, a hater or whatever? I said you sound like a stupid hater. Okay. Because you got to you gotta leave out a lot of facts to get to where you got to. And if it's one thing, like, it's one thing if you was giving the same energy to Kobe and Mike, but you talking like what LeBron went through is something that only LeBron went through. So when you say Kobe would have done this and Kobe would have done that, why he didn't do it against Dallas when they swept him? I never said Kobe didn't get swept. I said in that play, Kobe would have got a shot off. You don't agree? Well, no, I don't agree because why he didn't? Why he? Why didn't he get a shot off when with all the times that he got eliminated out of the playoffs? Well, you're moving the goalpost to elimination. I said a shot off, but if you don't agree that Kobe would have got a shot off in that position, that's cool. Yeah, but the, the fact that you think he would is, is crazy, too, because a, a, a good defensive play is a good defensive play. And players have had good defensive plays put on them, all great players, no matter who they are. The only, the only really, the only unstoppable shot, I, I've never seen it on tape being stopped. Um, I don't know if it has or not, but the only player with a signature unstoppable shot has been the hook, the sky hook from Kareem. So even when it comes to Jordan or, or Kobe or anybody else, they've had they've had they, they shots stopped on attempts. Every everybody, every great player has. I'm not arguing that point, but I'm saying you said I'm missing some facts. So did you did you ever play basketball? I've never played professional basketball. No, no, I'm talking about basketball, period. Yeah, yeah, of course. OK, so I don't know how old you are. But uh, throughout history, when when you go to the park and them, there's an older cat that comes to a park, his jump shot and his spot up game is going to be mean because he's going to get to a spot. When your athleticism go down and he's been getting away with being so athletic for so long, but now that's starting to diminish. 
and he can't really get around people. So he should have been working on getting to a spot and rising up above a person. I've seen MJ do it a million times. Kobe do it a million times. He practiced these moves. MJ would just turn middle, rise up and shoot the ball. No dribble necessary. He's already 6'6". LeBron is 6'10". And he doesn't have that in his game. That's all I said. Well, the, the difference is, though, is that that's a moment. And so if you if you judge, if you saying that he should have been able to do that at that moment, then that's even unreasonable because LeBron has more clutch shots. He's been able to get up and get that shot off more than anybody since since they've been tallying up how many people have took uh, have took clutch shots. What's up, buddy? Hold on, buddy. That since yep. they've been tallying up how much they took clutch shots. So if you're saying that, oh, because he didn't get that one off, that somehow goes against the fact that he's already got quadruple the amount that anybody else has, then you, you're making an unfair argument towards him as a player in general. Now, if you're just talking about that one shot, I still say no, because he had one guy on him, LeBron's bread and, LeBron's bread and butter is going to the basket. Now, in this series, he should have been going to the basket a lot more than shooting them dumbass threes that he shot way more often than he should have. He should have been going to the basket, uh, uh, going to the hole a lot more and trying to pick up the foul or trying to make the layup or dunk it. So in this play that, you, that you're talking about now, I can agree that I can agree that he probably should have passed it after he probably should have passed it as soon as they throw it to him. I don't think he should have uh, tried to drive in, even though that's his best chance. He probably should have passed it to uh, Rui. I think Rui was sitting right over there by himself. That's what he should have done. He made a bad. He made a bad play, or um, I ain't gonna say made a bad play, but the defense just made a uh, just did better in that instance. But when you try to when you talk like when you talk like it's somehow this moment is somehow against his legacy, it's a false equivalence because he played a great game. But you bringing up his legacy. I never said anything about his legacy. I said he's not that. I played with both Kobe Bryant and I played with Michael Jordan. And when it comes to getting a shot off in that moment, I, I, I would bet my house, I would bet everything I have that it, Kobe Bryant and Michael Jordan would have gotten a shot off. But, but why would you bet that in that exact instance, what I'm saying? Because if you got a defender on, you already got one defender. So uh -huh. as soon as they throw the ball in, before you, as soon as they throw the ball in, you had two defenders jump on you. So you saying that they would have, they would have got up and took the jump shot. I'm saying, I'm saying I could say probably most likely they would, but even in that instance, it's still no guarantee. And so if we going off ifs and all of that, like, that's fine because you can you can do a lot of what ifs. Like what if Jordan would have beat Bird, which he never did. But so what I'm moving the goalposts again because, nah, because like LeBron. I'm just talking about me knowing the skill set of MJ, knowing the skill set of the late great Kobe. LeBron James does not have that skill set. You can move the goalposts to game winning shots. You can move the goalposts to how many times he got a title or how many whatever. Because it seems like you guys are going to use stats to kind of combat anything that someone says. But from a skill set standpoint, even Gilbert Arenas, he, he played this game. He was a great scorer. You have to get to a spot. Anybody that knows basketball, as you get older, your whole game must evolve. You can't be out just trying to bull people over and running like you're 20 years old. That's why LeBron loses esteem in the second half. Because, and, and if his three-point is working – then, yeah, they'll win the game because his shot will fall. But if that shot is not falling, he has nothing in between. And that's all I'm saying. He has no pinch post game like that. He's trying to get to the uh, uh, free throw line, but he doesn't shoot from the th free throw line. He just runs people over. But see, Kwame, are you, you're not even listening to yourself, though, bro. You yeah, keep right. saying, I'm moving the goalposts, and it's just about that one shot, but you keep bringing up his game overall and other things. So you, and even, even in your original two videos, you didn't just talk about that one shot. You talked about how he plays in general. We're so, comparing, he's in the GOAT conversation, correct? Right. So we're comparing him to the GOATs. If you're going to... If every you, you compare his whole game, you keep when, when I give you my response, you'll say I'm moving the goalpost because I'm talking I'm talking about his game overall and what he's done outside of that one shot. Yeah, you doing the same thing. You keep talking about how he how he's barreling in. Okay, go ahead. 
I was saying you was talking about his stats, bro. His stats are his game, bro. Like th this is stuff he actually did. So when you talk about him barreling in and getting out shots and being a running back and running people over, if he made if he made that shot without getting a charging foul put on him, then he made that shot. It's not just a stat. That's his actual game, his actual performance. And you think that that game at 38 years old qualifies him as the GOAT? Are you, are you saying GOAT or GOAT? <laughs> they, they, always, they always say GOAT or GOAT. They say they put, uh, GOAT, GOAT is greatest woman of all time. That's Clarissa Shields. You know what I'm saying? That's the GOAT. GOAT, GOAT is. You, you, you understand what I mean. Is he the GOAT to you? Um, I would I, I I got I put it in two different ways, to be honest with you, because I don't think it's that cut and dry. I think the greatest basketball player ever, the, the guy to ever pick up a basketball is Kareem Abdul Jabbar because um I'm going off his time in high school. He was the best in high school, he was the best in college, and he was the best in the NBA. Um okay. if I'm going off the greatest NBA player of all time, then I'm gonna go with LeBron. Mm -hmm. I'm confused. Right. So I, uh, LeBron has had a better NBA career, in my opinion, than Kareem as far as his performance, his performance in the NBA. But like I said, overall, I think nobody has had a better lived a life ever as a better basketball player than Kareem, because like I said, he was he was the best at all three stages during his time in the game. I, I don't know nobody else who could say that. Well, it's a lot of people. It's a lot of people that won't respect LeBron as the goat ever because of how much assistance the league gives him every single year. There's going to be another sweepstakes of players um, that you know. Clutch Sports is a sports uh, agency that they can you know pr potentially move players where they need to be because I've never seen a superstar. What do you say to this? A superstar that played with so many great players. I think I think that that's perceived that way, mostly because it, it's mostly because of how. No, but listen, I think when it, when they talk about like LeBron and him playing with all these quote unquote superstars, it's perceived that way because of number one how he announced it and the fact that he went out and put it together. Like if a if a if a if a team had put that Miami team together it wouldn't have been such a big deal if LeBron hadn't did a press conference and came out on stage with the with the fireworks and the steam and all that shit. I think it would have been perceived different because when we go back to teams in the NBA, nobody talks about that Lakers team with Norm Nixon because we somehow we forget about how great Norm Nixon was. Norm Nixon was a fucking great player. So when we talk about Norm Nixon, Magic Johnson, and Kareem being on the same team, don't nobody say, oh, man, they cheated the league. They was a super team. You know, you just say they was a great team. So th when, you, when you look back at the league, even, even that Rockets team that, that won back-to-back, why wouldn't that come? Why wouldn't that be considered a super team? Look at the, look at all the talent they had on that team. So it's like LeBron seems to be the only guy that the standard is if he don't have the sorriest team and it's just him by himself. Somehow it takes away from him and his team winning. Nah, that's that's been a thing in the NBA. It was just never a problem until LeBron did it, and I think it's a problem because of the way he did it. No, I, I agree with that. There's some truth to that, that there's always been three good players on every team. But the difference is uh, those three good players would stay together. LeBron seeks out other players almost after every season, and he goes out and get them. In mid-season, if the, if the team doesn't work, he's going to go shuffle the deck and get a whole bunch of different players. So I don't but, know how, I don't but know but how that's going to be like. That that's only adds to LeBron's greatness because that's what a good GM does every year, and that's what I'm saying. Like you it's like we, LeBron is the GM. What I'm what I'm saying is we have, are not used to the basketball. If you look out at basketball from the time it's began or the time we remember, because I didn't start watching basketball, uh, start paying attention to it really until like the late '80s, and so from the time I've been watching and from what I know before, there there haven't been a player that did it that way, that said that 
I want to be, I want to play with this guy. I want to play with that guy and make it and makes it happen. There's been times where people, where players have, uh, have said or wanted to play with other guys, but didn't make it happen because that wasn't the nature of the league. So LeBron did come along and change that and say, Hey, you know what? I want to play over here and I want to play with this guy and I want to play with that guy. And that, so, so don't you, don't you see why people can lose the respect for him? No, because I don't. I can, I can see how they. Hold on, hold on. Let me my bad, my bad. The reason why people are going to lose respect for them because what you call the nature of the league, uh, it looks very suspicious to us that his high school friend, Rich Paul, is now a sports agent. And so that can have a lot of things that a person can have power over in the NBA. When your right hand man owns a sports agency, when your other friend owns a, a, a managing company, uh, Fame clutch sports or whatever and you have media members that work up under you and so it's it's just looking like that they have a whole engine to keep this image up of lebron and as soon as i said one thing i if you notice i wasn't even disrespectful in my take and then there's a bunch of media pundits that come back disrespectful to me same way you did in the chat i have every right to say that uh, you know the two guys i played with in my opinion, is better than LeBron James. Why would a stranger need to call me stupid and, and angry or whatever you call me, a stupid hater? Why would a stranger need to call me a stupid hater just because we have a difference of opinion? Because, well, I said you sound like one. I didn't call you one, but nonetheless, this but is why. You haven't been able to explain to me why I sound I'm, like a stupid right. hater. Yet. I'm telling you why. Because this is why it's coming to you like this because your assessment doesn't make sense and it's not on point. So if you make it, if you Kwame Brown are making an assessment about a player that's not on point, then that's why people would say you a hater. It's not because your opinion of basketball is invalid. It's because when you make a ridiculous opinion about basketball and you go on to say the things that you say about LeBron, you sound like a hater because you, you saying something that's totally off. If you was if you if it sounded like you was making a fair uh, assessment or uh, not even fair, just intelligent, like your, your your assessment of this don't even sound intelligent. It sounds stupid because, like I said, if you if you keep talking about oh, I'm just talking about this one shot, you telling me that, and then once you start talking, you start going into his game and all other aspects of it. Like your audience gonna do the same thing; they gonna keep calling me a fanboy and all this type of shit. When I can have an unbiased, I can have an unbiased conversation with you or anybody about basketball, about LeBron, about MJ, about whatever. But if your takes are not, if your takes don't sound right and they sound stupid to me, that's why I said that. Not because I'm a LeBron fanboy or this and that. It's because you not you not properly assessing the situation and you sound like a hater when you do that. Well, I just think I'm gonna chalk it up to you being a, you're, you're being ignorant to my basketball knowledge. You don't know what I know, and so just because you're ignorant to what I know, that doesn't make what I'm saying stupid. I asked you, did you play basketball, period? And I, I spoke about the game. Anybody who knows when you, get, when you get older, the game is about spots and positioning. And all I said was, if we're going to go and put him in that uh, GOAT category and he does not possess these things to be able to get to a spot and rise up and have a But goal. that's one thing, Kwame. Oh, brother, I didn't interrupt you. Now, you said I'm a My student. bad, my bad, my bad, bro, my bad. Uh, show me it's your bad by muting your mic, please. But you call a man a stupid hater that has more knowledge than you. And that's what's wrong with us, our society now. Just because what I know is outside of your understanding, that doesn't give you a right to disrespect a strange man. You don't know LeBron. I, I actually know LeBron. We're not friends, but I've shared the court with LeBron. You're going to get that emotional over my opinion because my opinion can't be wrong. It's not fact. It's just an opinion. So you want to tell me that I'm not smart, but you're arguing over an opinion and you're calling me stupid. Because is your opinion is stupid, bro. Your opinion is stupid. But that's your opinion. So you don't even have right. to say it. But you don't have to say it in that way just because you don't agree with somebody. You come you can, up. You, we can say that something stupid, bro. You say it all the time. If you say something stupid, you just say something stupid. OK, OK. You come up, you have the conversation. That's why I brought you up. But to me, you just seem emotional about LeBron. 
because Man, anybody, I, I think you're trying to cop out right now, bro. We can have the conversation. Now you're trying to take it somewhere else. Now you're trying to over talk me, so I'm gonna just go ahead and let you go. Because I didn't hear you say nothing that showed me that I was a stupid hater. This guy don't know shit about basketball. He just wants to go against everything I said. Every time I said something to him, he moved the goalposts. We ain't talk about the points. If we're gonna be comparing, they do this every year. He's in a quote, a GOAT category. They pair, they compare him to Kobe Bryant. They compare him to LeBron James. In that moment, what I saw with him not getting that shot off, he's not in that category, in my opinion. If you want to talk about his overall game, he does not have an in-between game. He does not know how to get to spots. In transition, he's a hell of a transition player. He can only shoot threes or go right or go left. And it's been working. He plays bully ball. Gilbert Arenas played basketball. He said the same thing I said. So I don't know why you fanboy guys come up here and talk in a way like you're supposed to know more basketball than me. Regardless of whether you think I'm a hater, whether you think I'm jealous, whatever your personal feelings are, that don't have nothing to do with the actual facts. Your stats are going to be inflated because LeBron James has played basketball since a teenager. He's 20, he's 20 years in. So, of course, he's going to have hell of a stats. But that does not take away the fact that he's not as skilled as one would think that the greatest scorer should be. And if you want to have that conversation, we can have it. But all this yelling and you're stupid and all this, go on somewhere with all that. You don't get it. John Smith, what's going on? Hold on. Can I talk? Nah, nah, you can't. I said what's going on. You come up here talking about can I talk? Hell no. I don't want to hear crybaby shit already. Uh black proper cat. Uh, black proper cat. Uh you gotta mute your mic. You gotta mute your mic. Okay. In the background, just turn your YouTube off. No, you gotta turn your YouTube off in the background. It's an echo. You unmute your mic and turn your YouTube off in the background. Yeah, that's all they want. He want to talk about points, uh, but don't want to talk about the turnovers. You have the best on both sides of the ball, not just points. So he has the most points, but he also has the most turnovers. You can't, But you can't say that because that makes you a hater. Like, it makes no sense. Nah, John Smith, you already sound like you want to be a victim. You came up here talking about, can I talk? I addressed you. I said, John Smith, what's up? Go ahead. Oh, can I talk? No, man. I, I don't want to hear that that weak stuff. If somebody said your name, they addressed you, of course you could talk. I ain't up here to fake debate and fake argue with people. If you have something real that you want to say, if you have a question about what I said and only about what I said, we can have that conversation. But I'm not doing all this dumb shit with people that just want to argue over LeBron. I don't play games. What's up? What's up, boss man? Um, do you think you could let me on a little bit later because my friend wants to talk to you? I was just trying to have him come on. I agree with everything you're saying. We can we can try to do it, but I'm gonna go get on the boat uh, here shortly. I'm gonna work out and get on the boat. But uh, oh yeah, it ain't gonna take me nothing but five minutes. Uh, not even five, probably like two minutes, bro. If you could just get me in and then come back to me. That would be great, bro. All right, just put your mic on mute. I'll leave you in the background, gotcha, and then I'll awesome. bring you back up for sure. Uh, Jake the Great, what's up? Kwame Brown, what's happening, man? What's going on with you, man? Pleasure to talk to you, dog. You too. What's going on, brother? No, nah, nah, just at work, man. Hey, man, I, I see you going through with Shannon Sharp. I heard what you said, but thinking about it, you 100% right, though, because I had the opportunity to watch Kobe and watch Jordan, and both of them had a spot. Even though Jordan pushed off on uh, Russell, he Facts. was able to get to a spot. LeBron, if you think about it, he has no spot. He has no finishing move. So I'm like, damn, Kwame, I never thought about it in that kind of fashion, the way you broke it down. But anybody that says that you a hater, they, they they smoking crack, bro, because you you play basketball at the highest level and you've seen that the man got no shot. And it's 100 percent facts. He don't got his uh, signature go to move in crunch time. 
Exactly. And I, I didn't say anything disrespectful. I'm saying they have this conversation all the time where they compare LeBron to Kobe and MJ. And just from what I've seen being around both of them, uh, LeBron is not even in the same category as them. His stats say that uh, because of the longevity and the great job that he's done with his body. Uh, but from a talent standpoint and all around game, he doesn't have that. Nah, he doesn't. And, you know, with, with people call LeBron the GOAT, the greatest of all time. When I look at LeBron, I see a, a Magic Johnson reincarnated. I think he's an outstanding passer, facilitator of the ball. But as far as that killer instinct, he ain't on that MJ and Kobe level. He's a great player. Nonetheless, I root for him. You know what I'm saying? You ain't no hater for calling out how you see it. I respect yeah. your opinion. And don't let no nigga tell you otherwise. But you know what I'm saying? I'm at work trying to finish up this truck in here. I just want to tap in. All you right, saying? brother. Appreciate hey, it. Be, be easy, dog. All right. Jermaine, what's up, brother? I'm on. Hey, what's up, Kwame? What's going on? Hey, man. Hey, man. I just want to say I agree with you. I'm from Maryland, but we we, we always been your fan right here. But um, yeah, I just want to say I agree with you. I understand what you're saying, man. You know how people is. You know they fanatics. But I just want to say I, I support what you're saying. That's all. Salute to you, brother. I appreciate you. All right. Have a good day, man. You too. Uh, who we got? PJ the God. What's going on, PJ? What's up? What's up, big bro? What's up? I know you. I knew. I know you, ready. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, big bro. You know I gotta talk to you, man. Yeah, I know you ready to go. What's up? All right, man. Now we. You went up. Now I ain't gonna be biased. Unk was wrong. For saying about that Mount Rushmore bus stuff, all that stuff was wrong. He shouldn't have said that. Now, I admit when a man wrong, he was wrong. But Kwame, at the same time, LBJ, you you remember in the playoffs against Orlando, against Dwight Howard, the last second shot, he rolls up a three pointer from a logo three pointer, rolls up and hit it, a buzzer beater. So Brian is capable of rising up at the last second but, and hitting so that, a shot so over somebody. That, that means you agree with me because in my take, I said what he can do is hit threes and go to the basket. And so, yes, he hit that long three, but we're talking about his in-between game. He doesn't have Okay, to. okay. So, Kwame, he does have a signature shot. He got a, a signature bear you down, dream shake, and he'll fade away. That's his signature shot. What? He he back you down on the post and he <laughs> fade away. He hits you with that shake and he fade away. That's his signature shot. You've been watching too much ESPN. Man. <laughs> you said look, three, look, look, yeah. this what man has three? the most points in history, Kwame. He does, but let me ask you this. Do you think if you you you've seen Kobe Bryant, correct? God rest you, the, uh, yes, 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 like yes, yes. Like you know what I'm about to say. You know Kobe would have got to a spot, rose up, and either made that shot or missed it. Come on now. But Dick Brown get fouled. That if 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 that was Kobe, they would have called that foul. If that was Jordan, you think they would have called foul? that foul. You think that was a foul? Come on now. That's the last second you went Los Angeles. He at home. This the playoffs. This is LBJ. The last second you gotta call that foul. You gotta call it now. If he miss, if he don't make both of the free throws, then then, then that's it is what it is. So wait, you but if, gotta, so you believe they just got to call a foul just because it was a foul, uh, just because it's LeBron and he at home? If it was a clearly foul, they've been fouling LeBron all year. When Jason Tatum, he clearly fouled LeBron the last a second shot. He stopped the man whole arm and they ain't call it. They've been doing it for Brian. Oh, you're but Brian a flopper. So, so I was right in my take when I said he was looking for the refs to save him because you was looking for the refs to save him as well. Hey, I, I, I ain't gonna lie, Kwame. I was looking for the refs to save him. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm gonna keep it real. I'm gonna keep it real. I was looking for that because I know they would have saved Kobe and Jordan. They would have saved them boys. So let me ask you this. Do you think Brian hit both free throws or one? I, I can't say. I'm going to be honest with you. I can't say. I can't say. We'll never know. 
Oh, okay, Kobe, Kobe at the free throw line. Does he hit both or one? He hit both. Okay. But why would you root for somebody else to save LeBron if he the GOAT? Why wouldn't he save himself for the team? Ain't that what you but, You got to think about this, though. If that was Jordan driving, would that been called a foul or not? Yes, your honest opinion, yes or no? In Chicago, playoff time. Um, that play, I don't know because it wasn't a foul on the play. It's oh hard. my god, come on! There is no foul on the play. They're not come foul. on, Corsino. Really, yes. really, no foul on the guy had his hand on the ball and he backed his body up. He never touched LeBron. LeBron and what's his name was standing up there and he blocked the shot. Never, you know, can you cue that up real quick? Put in the back chat to see if he can find a foul. <laughs> Kwame, Kwame, so you telling me in 1998, uh, if Jordan drive the ball on Carl Malone and John Stockton in, in, in that same situation, they would have called a foul on Carl Malone. Aaron Gordon was Carl Malone and, and Jamal Murray was John Stockton. They would have called their foul. Jordan is more clever. Jordan probably would have... Uh, hit his own wrist or something and made a noise that because Jordan used to drive baseline and hit his own wrist on that reverse layup. He would have done something and be clever to, to force him to call that foul. LeBron didn't even get the ball into an attacking position. They stripped it from him down low. Or they but, got it from him down low. Kwame, has Brian won the ring on every team he's been on? He's yep. been a leader on every team, every city he goes to. Championships happen. Dreams come true. I don't know who is the leader. I think Udonis may have been the leader on Miami because Udonis. Wow. No, no, seriously. I, I know you might not know this, but Udonis, it don't matter about who the, the best player on the team is. Udonis has that personality that he going to keep everybody in order, and they allow him to do that. I'm telling you. He's an enforcer on the sideline, but you know, when it comes is, to the game, he's game time that. leadership, that's no. Brian all day. You think Kyrie can do it? AD can't do it. Everywhere he go, his co-star can't lead. He has to take that. I'm now watch this one. Watch it. Leader of that team, I promise you that. Watch this foul. You say it's a foul? Watch Where, it. Where's the foul? Okay. You went into no man's land. Oh. This. this is the dumbest play I've ever this seen. Oh, ain't foul. Where's the foul? That's a block. See? Hold on, wait, right. wait, wait. Okay, play over. He blocked it. So ain't right no there, problem. right there. After right. the the man clearly stopped the man hand. What, what do you mean? He, he just hit the ball. What are you talking about? In the hell? He didn't slap that man. Oh my god! So he ain't slapped the king hand. No. Nope. Come on, man. Here we go. Oh. Right there. Uh, right there. What's that? So there's, there's no contact. There's no contact. The ball is out his hand and it is a block. He blocked the ball. Block. Look at, Look at all that contact. Hey, go that's, back that's that's a lot of hit contact. Him. Hold on, Hold on, bro. In his arm. Hey, he the See, hey, see, no, go back real quick. Look at AD. If he would have reverse pivoted, look at AD wide open at the top. Yeah, if he, he was front back. AD. AD is wide open. He's feeling behind. Yep. But this is why. This is why I was talking about the play yesterday. See, in the original set, I don't think this shows it. Murray is guarding, he's guarding Hachimura. He let him go. This is a defensive strategy by Denver because they're playing a 1-3-1, a one, one, basically. Right. Zone, I mean, zone defense. So once he let Hachimura go, Joker takes him. So AD going to be at the top of the key because it's four seconds. They know when LeBron does this pin down curl, that they going to look for LeBron. He ain't going to have enough time to throw it out to AD. That's why they let AD be open. they like, look, we're going to live and die with that shot there. But LeBron ain't going to beat us in the middle. We ain't going to let that happen. So Murray cut off his driving lane, which LeBron did not expect. He thought he was going to be able to get around that corner and go one-on-one -on -one with Gordon to the rim so he could try to get a foul. Yep. But Murray messed up the plan. See, Murray's right there. He's watching the play with LeBron because he knows what's going to happen. He sees LeBron coming around this screen. LeBron tried to do this earlier. 
This is his only move he could do on the pin down, moving without the ball. He's going to – Hachimura is supposed to set the pick, and as soon as he set that pick, the, uh, Jokic picks up Hachimura, and he goes and jumps in front of LeBron to slow LeBron down so that Gordon could get back and stay with him. But Gordon never lost him. See, he tried to set the pick to give him LeBron enough space. The ball was late anyway. Mm -hmm. I mean, reads through the ball late. The ball should have been already on the way. So now LeBron got to wait. So it's Reed's fault. Oh, shit. <laughs> no, no, no. That's what Corsino just said. I'm just partially, saying that's what Corsino partially, said. Partially on this play, yes. It partially is his fault because he threw the ball late. The ball okay, should, that's all I wanted to hear. should have the ball right now. <laughs> Did he got to wait for the ball. Mm -hmm. So that's going to leave Gordon with enough time to get there. Murray would have fell off and had LeBron anyway. But now LeBron got to wait for the ball. So Gordon's got to – he's got time. See, now he's right there caught up. LeBron caught it. He still got a step on Gordon, but Gordon's faster. <laughs> so he looked. He, by the time he got that engine revved up to go, but at, on that Pinto, <laughs> that new F FZR50 is right there. <laughs> caught but up look, but, but Kwame, but Kwame, you say he should have passed it to – AD, and if AD would have missed it, y'all would have killed LeBron for that. Because y'all would have said Jordan would have never passed the ball. He would have took that shot. Kobe would have never passed the ball. Kobe would have took that shot. I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have said anything to a wide open guy. A, a wide open shot is better than what he got right here. So what I would have done and what I would have thought he would have done, is he didn't even see the defense. He didn't even see that he was getting led into a trap. He yeah. thought he was by this guy. Man, LeBron has the highest oh, IQ in basketball. Hold on, hold on, though, brother. You got the highest mic in the, on the damn scene, though. But hold on one second. Uh, <laughs> this man should have watched the defense, and he would have saw that he was getting led into a trap. He yeah. should have pivoted or either got it early from Austin Reeves, but even if he didn't, he could have drove right into the middle. You don't ever want to go to the baseline. Matter of fact, Miami Heat automatically funnel you to the baseline for situations like this. You're supposed to get to the middle of the defense. If he would have took, caught that ball, drove at the middle, then now you have a better option of seeing AD wide open. And let me explain to you a little something about plays, sir. Every one play is not designed to go one way. Every play is designed to have two to three different options in the play. If something else is stopped, then this option is open. You have option B. You have option C. You have all these different options on the same route. So even though it might look the same, it, the play might not go the same way because you have different options on the play. So the person who has the ball has to know every read that he has open. He should know on this play that AD is the slip out, man. He's the one that slipped out. He should already know AD's there. I'm not saying he should have gave it to AD. I'm saying that's an option. You should know that I have that option. But because of the time, it's 3.6 seconds. He would have to make that decision quick. But he's made his mind up that he's got to be the one to score this and shoot this. Yep, if and that's what happened. It, yeah, and if you look in and you're LeBron, you see Murray here and you see Gordon – you know they're getting ready to stop you. So you got to know I got to pull up quick before I get to Murray. I got to do a pull-up jump shot right here and shoot this ball while I have the advantage. The closer I get to Murray, the less of my chances go of making this shot. It's the fourth quarter. He's out of gas. He's on fumes right now. So you're burning all your energy that you got left to try to make this shot. Because he's already, y'all forgot he missed the one before this where he hit the side of the backboard. So <laughs> this is his second attempt of trying to tie the game. So he's already been burnt the, the midnight oil. So now he's sitting here right now on fumes trying to burn past some guys who train in high altitude. <laughs> they're not tired. So here he is. Yeah, they're right definitely now. not tired. No, so he gets the ball. He drives, so he's made his decision. So Murray's already finna commit. Joker's got hot support right at the rim. Anthony Davis could be out there at the top. LeBron's not finna swing him the ball. He's not even in a position to swing AD the ball. He can't even see him. 
So his vision is blocked by Gordon, so he don't even see that. He's looking straight about, I'm going to try to draw a foul rather than stopping right there, pulling up for a jump shot. Murray's going to cut your path off to the basket. So and he's that's why I said what I said. Look at Look at it. This yeah, is not even a what I said. He was looking for a foul. Right. He looked like he's trying to get a first down. He, <laughs> he like he's trying to get a first down. But, but big bro, the big bro. <laughs> Every time Skill Bayless, he would have killed LeBron because he said he can't shoot free throws. He's scared to shoot free throws the last a second of the game. That's why Le 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 LeBron was like, it it's like if he don't drive, he gonna get killed because they saying he's scared to shoot free throws. So it, it, it's like he in a lose lose situation. Like y'all want him to do so so many things, y'all way. Like it's like he can't win. Well, isn't that the criteria of being the greatest of all time? Don't they expect that from Jordan? Don't they expect that from Kobe Bryant? Don't they expect that from any player they say is the greatest player to ever play the game? Why are there excuses being made for him? Because not, he is not, he, he's 38 years of age. He's 38 well, years of age. They need to retire. He's That's been playing a year for 20 years. No man like walking his planet has ever did that. But PJ, I'm going to have to drop you down because we got to let some other people get on the mic. You too emotional about LeBron right now. We can't have it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll bring you back up, PJ, because when we try to kick, we, we got to be able to bounce back facts. I, I hope, hope that everybody on the panel is not such a LeBron James fan that we can't uh, talk a little X's and O's without all the shouting and the yelling. But uh, how you doing, Miss uh, Tracy Dean? I'm fine. How you doing? Go ahead. Give us your opinion on the situation. I want to go back to what the guy was talking about in regards to um, you giving your opinion on LeBron. Mm -hmm. He was talking about making teams and how teams are made and all this stuff like that. So I want to say that LeBron set a precedence, though, when he started with creating his dream team. Back in the day when you had teams, you had the Celtics, you had Lakers, you had Chicago, you had everybody. It was a natural gel. These people came mm -hmm. to the team. This is who they drafted, who they selected, whatever. And that's the team that you roll with. You know what I'm saying? And then when LeBron created this thing where he wanted to bring people, which everybody has, but with the advent of social media, you see a lot of stuff now where you know who's trying to bring someone in or who they're trying to uh, draft or whatever. Back then, even if that occurred, it was something that was behind scenes. You know what I'm saying? So now you get to the point where LeBron is doing, going to Miami. He's going to Los Angeles. He's drafting this person, bringing this person in create that dream team when those was not though they were naturally built so it's not wrong for you to say that lebron is in essence trying to make something happen that's not going to happen or wouldn't naturally happen so what i was saying was that a lot of people think that um he's not wrong or he's not uh being uh above the league or acting as a general manager when that's not the way it's, it's naturally done you can move from here to there everywhere but if it's not naturally going to happen it's not going to happen and yes it has happened when he's moved these teams but it created a thing where Carmelo Anthony was in Denver and you got to understand that a lot of people a lot of names are synonymous with the teams that they're with and they have a, and a lot of people didn't move you stay with your team you hope that you would get that natural gel or you would hope that they would bring somebody in that will get you to where you got to go but now it's like right. everybody's looking for that that, and, that, that, and that's why so many that's why so many uh people who old school players they think that they're hating on LeBron because a lot of people they just don't respect that. Uh yes. Kobe, Kobe was one of them. And mm -hmm. so to to argue down everybody who says to, to that gives any pushback against LeBron like I still think LeBron is a great player. Um right. but when we talk about this goat argument uh between Kobe and MJ from from what I gather and what I've seen in the locker room, I just don't think LeBron has the skill set to call himself that. He's played 20 years. He's able to score in the open court. He has a he maximized his athleticism. He's a great player, but he, he was supposed to be able to get to spots and, and do certain things. And even Gilbert Arenas uh, agree with that. And but I agree with that totally. Focus to God. What's up, brother? You you've been waiting for no matter of fact, it's Chris the barber that was up here first. Go ahead, Chris. Uh, what's going on, y'all? Uh, 
first of all, I think it's just as simple as people in this controversy society, they were looking for the trigger word and a trigger statement. And, and the trigger statement for you is when you had said, uh, Lakers fans burn his jersey. That's all they was looking for. You know how fast that hit the internet and how many people, as soon as you finish that uh, that video, was making videos talking about Kwame Brown. Uh, Kwame Brown went off. Kwame Brown went off. So I think it was just as simple as people, LeBron defenders and LeBron lovers, they uh, was looking for that trigger word and you gave it to them. And it just uh, made such a groundswell that uh, Shannon and Skip had to respond to it. Yeah. Like I'm a uh, like I'm a lifelong I'm a lifelong Knicks fan, lifelong yeah. Knicks fan, and I can't stand Michael Jordan, <laughs> but he is the goat. <laughs> and you know what's sad? You know what's, you know what's sad about it though? I said that because this is YouTube. I don't even own a LeBron James jersey. Like, I, and that was, that's no diss. I'm not gonna burn a man's jersey. It was a joke. I didn't even bet on the game. It, all of that was just comic relief because it's YouTube. But they never talked about what I actually said when it came down to this GOAT conversation that they all like to have. I gave mm -hmm. I gave well thought out points about why I thought that he wasn't like that. He's not on that level as MJ and Kobe was. Is he a great player? Absolutely. But, you know, trotting him out, getting him six, seven new players every year um, to, to hold up this whole he's the GOAT thing while he's driving to the True. basket play is crazy. That is true. Man, and another, thing, uh, another thing to answer that question, uh, when they, they always throw that he's 38. Michael Jordan was 38. He had six championships, no final losses, about six MVPs, but he was first team all NBA, first team all defense. First team every year. So what is the criteria that you right. want that to say? The criteria. If, that, if you want to be the greatest of all time, you got to be the greatest on both sides of the ball. You There is no, it's 94 feet. You There's never been anybody in the game that's been considered the greatest of all time who didn't play defense and, and was top in NBA first team defense and was on the top number one first team all, all NBA. There is nobody in the world who can miss being on an all defensive team up there and be considered the GOAT. That is that is incredible. This man leads the whole NBA in turnovers. There's nothing like Kobe, all these guys, they perfected protecting the ball. Michael Jordan's is up there in steals every year. Every year he was in top five of steals. So he cared about it defensively. Kobe Bryant, defensively, he was in his 30s guarding point guards. This, this is what the game was missing. LeBron has never been a defender. He, oh, he never would take the assignment of guarding the toughest guy on the court. Michael Jordan would guard the toughest player. Kobe Bryant would guard the toughest guy if he had to. If that's he what this is. Yeah, that, if that was the assignment called for, he's going to do it. Kobe, LeBron and James, look at the yeah, but LeBron wouldn't guard Kevin Durant. Durant. He wouldn't guard KD. <laughs> I'm like, dude, you in the NBA Finals. This dude cooking you, dude. Get on him. Exactly. He's turning it over to somebody else because he don't want to get embarrassed. Mm -hmm. See, you got to look at the errors they played in, too. Yeah, exactly. You gotta look uh, they'll take your head off back in the, them days. You know, now yeah. you get a flagrant. Back then, they called it a hard playoff foul. You know, they, they developed the Jordan rules for a reason. Back then, I don't think a lot of these players could deal with the Jordan rules. You know, I never played at, at the NBA, but a lot of these players would have tapped out when somebody like Charles Oakley trying to take your head off. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, but Charles but Oakley would give you 12 and 12. <laughs> Why doing Oakley. that? <laughs> definitely, 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 definitely. So at the end of the day, it doesn't, it doesn't, what is the criteria that it takes in you guys' as a pan that'll make you a GOAT? What is the criteria? And what is the criteria that you guys think makes a GOAT that LeBron is lacking? Well, he doesn't have a complete game. I agree with Sino that um, playing with Kobe, if if you if you in practice and you and you make a good move on Kobe, he's that competitive. LeBron lacks that competitive nature that what we got here. Everybody that got to the NBA, we have a different level of competitive natures that we'll go to. And you'll hmm. see me and Gilbert, we compete all the damn time. We over the internet. I ain't seen Gilbert in 20, 18 years. And we still competing. Yeah. And so 
LeBron lacks that complete all around game. Kobe like wanted to. It was it was a it wasn't just a game to Kobe. You heard the story when he picked up Allen Iverson and uh, and he hung out with him in L.A. He asked Allen Iverson where he going. Allen Iverson, I'm going to the club. Uh, uh, Kobe said, I'm going to the gym. It's that it's that edge. He would wake up in the morning and swim before practice. Mm-hmm. He would stay late and get different and, and something that he felt off about his game. He would go work on the same move over and over again. He didn't never take a day off. If he missed a certain shot in the game that he thought he should have made, if he missed it twice, he'd be over there drilling that shot. He didn't just sit back and shoot threes. He would, he would call the uh, younger guys out to defend him so he can work on his ball handling full court if he felt his ball handling was shaky. That takes work, and he did that while being rich. He was the best player in the league at the time, still putting in that type of work. And so you got to be able to he – didn't, he didn't say, get, go get me a bunch of different players. On both ends of the court, Kobe competed. On, and, and, and getting to a spot, what I meant by a complete game, Kobe could take you to the post. Kobe can take you to the mid post, the pinch post. He can shoot threes. He can give it to you dirty on the one-on-one. He can come off the picket pin down. What is it that Kobe couldn't do on the basketball court? And that's what makes sense. And you got to worry about the killer instinct, too. You have to worry about the killer instinct, that mentality. True, yeah. true, true. That's, a, that's what makes it more so that you can't call someone a goat if you didn't go through the trenches and as – Kwame being the person that he is and being within the NBA, he knows what makes it a go. And his, his opinion is not stupid or anything like that because you can't tell somebody their opinion is stupid when they've actually been through it. They've actually done it. They've actually been involved with these certain players and he's seen how they uh, come up through the league or what they were before the league or after the league or whatever. I mean, you yeah, can't like Kobe, Kobe's, Kobe's will to win was different. And, and to me, that's what makes him one of the goats, him and MJ. You know, uh, I tore up my shoulder. I was supposed to be done for the season. He like, look, no, shoot it with your left hand. Showed me videos of him playing with a torn labrum from the whole damn season. He shot free throws with his left hand. Like this, his his will to win was different. When you when you comment on certain players and make them the goat, I will say that as I'm listening to your program, as I've always listened to your program, it's a rarity that we talk about the white players. So, what are the white players that you consider the goat? Um, uh, Larry Bird. Yeah, Larry, Larry Bird. The top. Yeah. To me. Larry Bird, and that's it. Nobody else that you got an opinion. I on like Dark Chocolate. I like Dirk Nowitzki and Steve Nash. Uh Steve yeah. Nash came with a whole unique style. He was he was short, small in stature, but the mm. way he played the game, he made everybody a threat. He's from Canada. Yeah, he's from he Canada made everybody though. A threat. Like it was so hard guarding him uh-huh. because he would dribble the ball up underneath the basket just to keep you moving. Mm. Now I'm I'm hometown Cleveland, so I love Mark Price and Kevin McHale. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Kevin yeah, McHale. Yeah. With a thousand. Oh, yeah. Kevin McHale. We, how can you forget Kevin McHale? How can you forget? Yes. yes. Well, Kevin McHale was a man of a thousand moves. He'll get to the paint and he would work on different variations. <laughs> shots up. And, you know, I'm from Chicago. I, I watched every Michael Jordan game there was, and I never considered him the GOAT because. Isaiah Thomas was the GOAT for me, the one that played for the Pistons, Isaiah Lord Thomas the third. That yes. was the greatest player <laughs> in basketball history. So I said he beat all of them though. He yeah. damn sure beat all of them though. He, he beat, beat Jordan. Uh, he beat the Bird. He beat the Lakers too. And that's why Mike Mike on him, Mike will always have that combativeness against Isaiah because Isaiah's the only player. Besides Larry, but Larry beat him when he was a rookie, you know, before. But when he was trying to get to the point of championship, the person that was stopping him was Isaiah. And Isaiah consistently beat him. And this is what always gets him. They won the one in 91, but it was like the team was done at that time. They were old. So it still hits at him that Isaiah had the better of him. No matter what he wanted to accomplish, six championships, he knows that Isaiah will always know he got the better of Mike. Mm-hmm. And that just don't sit well with Mike. <laughs> you know, <laughs> we already see how like fickle he is. So this this is why he keeps poking and saying stuff about Isaiah. And now Isaiah is speaking back and he's turning it back on Mike. And Mike is really, you know, beside himself because he knows this is why he starts saying, you know, LeBron's better than Mike. And he knows that messes with Mike. <laughs> <laughs> 
He yeah. even got that beard to say it. That beard was like, oh, yeah, why wouldn't you say LeBron better than Joy? Oh, I, I was laughing. I just, know, <laughs> I just want to know when the conversation had changed. LeBron used to shy away from the GOAT talk for years, you know, in the comparisons to Michael Jordan. And then all of a sudden, the King James thing came. You know, I know when he, uh, before he got drafted, he was the chosen one and everything. But uh, LeBron himself used to shy away from calling himself the best player in all time. I, I wonder when that changed. Once he started winning championships. Once he started winning championships, that's when the narrative changed for him. He got he became more arrogant. It was his time. He was with Miami during that time. And that's when the arrogance started to bolster up when he started going to finals and winning championships. So that all of a sudden now he was he considered himself the gold. And like he was like, Yeah, I will could call myself the best now. After 2016, he really thought he was the best. So now, and it was like, whoa, 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 the best is something that other people are supposed to Michael Jordan don't even call himself the he don't call himself the best player of all time. He let other people get about him. But he'll get pissed if somebody else said somebody was better than him. Because <laughs> he don't believe that. Because, I mean, even uh, Will Chamberlain told Michael Jordan, man, that was brutal. At the NBA 50 anniversary in that back room, well, he's like, they changed the rules in the game to help you score. They changed the games and the rules to stop me from scoring. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he told that to Michael Jordan. Oh, you can never do what I do. <laughs> no. <laughs> that was what was like, uh-uh, you not me. But look at this for LeBron, right? You see this young guy that's on the Lakers? I don't even know this kid's name. But he's trying to show, you know, like, reach out to Mike, I mean, LeBron, to say, hey, man, you know, good thing, support. And trying to give him dap and say, hey, man, you know, I'm on your team. I'm with you. You roll for us. He blows him all the way off. Don't even – blew the guy off. Don't even say nothing to the young guy. Just walks by. Now, that young kid, that's going to probably stick with him. Or he might let it go. You never know. But this is why you don't do that even in defeat. You might just not have been feeling that moment. Those little bitty things, those things probably matter to them. Like, this is a moment. Like, he probably was a little kid, wasn't even born, grew up watching you. Now he's on the team with you. You've been in this game 20 years. Like, one of the players said, my dad was on the court with you. Mm -hmm. and played with you when you, um, the guy from Houston. And he said, my dad was in your first game. He played against you in the first game. And the niggas playing each other this shit. He was like, oh, man. I didn't even know, realize that. It was like, yeah, his son is now on the court. And you playing against his son. But that's why he ain't daff him up, because you know he's going to get rid of him next year. He <laughs> <laughs> hey, can, can anybody, I know we a lot, everybody on here, we like historians. We all been watching basketball for a long time. So I got some numbers. I wanted to see if anybody can guess what this is. Four, eight, four, seven, one, five. Three. Anybody can guess what that is? LeBron phone number. Nah, <laughs> got his phone number. No, I ain't got his phone number. Hell no. Nah. I'm, I'm gonna repeat it again. Four, eight, four, seven, one, five, three. For time's sake, you tell us what it is. That's yeah. a seven game stretch of Kwame Brown from 20, 2004. That's a seven game stretch from in December, four eight four seven one five three. Okay, well, we talking about LeBron and the goat. What does that got to do with anything? Because I don't think that you can really be saying I I may play it at the highest level. LeBron ain't what's never gave your, us seven games stats? straight of single digits. Oh, wait, wait, wait. What's your stats? Because we're gonna do that. Let me flip that on you. What's your stats? Where did you play at? I played. Okay, I so played, you didn't make it to the you didn't make it to the NBA. So then, you, by your own logic, I'm gonna kick you off the panel because you so, can't. So because so <laughs> so by your own logic, if that's gonna be your argument that I can't speak on LeBron, then you just disqualified yourself because you can't speak on me. Right. I mean, but sense. do they even understand what does that even mean? Like right. somebody scores four points in a game. What what is the reason? You don't even know how many minutes they played in the game. You don't know. A Hold on. 
Somebody got the baby in the background. Yeah. Right? You don't even know the situation. You don't even know the situation. He just a uh, four and eight, three. You just read the stat line. This is exactly the point we're trying to make. Right. Y'all, we're facts over stats. You don't know if they put him in the game for one minute. He could have got hurt in the game. Right. You don't even know. You just reading a, a number. Look, he scored this many points. What happened well, there? I, I, well, see, no, I, I love when they do that because whoever takes that position that didn't make it to where I made it, then their their comment is null and void. Pretty much. And that's. I mean, that's I, basically how they're going to look at. That's basically how they're going to look at it. You know, yeah. when they compare you. When you uh, criticize other players, they're gonna talk about your career. But it is true they've never been to that. You, you wanted life, my man. You wanted life. Be happy with that. A lot of us trying to get into that position. You know, a lot of us trying to get there. I think it's a lot goes to a lot that the powers that be to us uh, black people, man. I think they want to keep us in disarray, keep us at each other's throats, keep us pocket watching, keep us wondering about what the next man got instead of helping each other. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. When we can't build with one another no more, I think that's when shit get lost. My uh part of my friends. But the, the uh sad, you know, I think that's when things thing get lost. Is, no, the sad thing about it is is that we have people running around like that, uh thinking that that make any sense. The fact of the matter is, uh they have goat talk all the time, and everybody that talks about LeBron, hell, most of them don't even play basketball. Most of the the top sports analysts never played in the NBA. So the fact that so many people yeah, now yeah, is, you know, they're going to move the goalposts for me to say, oh, because you wasn't this top tier player, then now you can't you don't know nothing about the game. I still know right. that LeBron James is supposed to get to a spot and rise up. He yeah. predetermined his move. He got ran into a trap, and that's exactly what they wanted to have happen. And so had he read the defense and and already had the supreme confidence in his game. He would have known he'd been working on a move to get to a spot, rise up and shoot like I've seen Kobe and MJ do over and over again. They've never compared LeBron James to Kwame Brown. They've compared LeBron James to Kobe Bryant and Michael Jordan. So in that comparison, right. he's not on the level of those two gentlemen. That's all I said. I didn't say anything to disrespect his career. Still had a hell of a career. But that those things that I just said is facts. Yes, and I want to say this for the person who just called in. I I mean, who just called in, who just chimed in. Um, The percent and the chances of anybody in this chat making the NBA is 0.5%. (laughs) 0.5% chances for everybody in the world, including you in this chat, to make it. If you are a college collegiate athlete to make it to the NBA, 1.2%. To win an NBA championship, only 1% of the players in the league will win an NBA championship. 1%. Let this let these numbers sink into you guys so you can really understand what it's really about. Because you got to understand to be the all-star in the NBA is 3%. 3% is an all-star. In the NBA, we'll get, we'll get a chance to be an All Star. So those are very low numbers, aren't they? So it's a very hard and difficult thing to just even make it to get drafted, to even go there because there's no determination you're going to even be successful. The average years in the NBA is three. Do you know that three years from the moment that you are drafted, you, you could be gone, and and three years you. So everybody thinks once you get drafted, you you made millions and millions of dollars. It's not true. A lot of these players have gotten drafted in the NBA. Some people played four or five years, and they already are got in another job somewhere because the, it don't last long. It's only three three years. It's the turnaround before they got someone else to come in, unless you're an exceptional world talent or just gotten the opportunity. Many people were on their last leg and and was out of this league and just got one opportunity. And now you see Malik Monk was out the NBA. The Lakers gave him a last second um, chance because uh, one of the players ended up, they decided not to take him. And then he was gone. They just like let him go. And they gave Malik Monk a chance. And he took a $1.5 million deal. He couldn't believe that he couldn't get signed by anybody. Nobody wanted him. So, what's because 
uh, you know, he got a bad rapport with Jordan, so that they gave him a bad name. And then now all of a sudden, he played amazing with the Lakers, and he got with the Sacramento Kings. Boom, there it is. So now you see, now he didn't work himself into a position, but he would have been out the league. So mm -hmm. sometimes it's just the right opportunity. Some people just not with the right team. But let that reality sink in for the people. That reality ain't going to sink in for them, Cino. These people, some of them are just fanatics for LeBron. So anything that you say that's uh, opposing to their opinion, um, they're going to label you a hater. And that's cool. True. But, you know, it is what it is. Yeah. Hey, Kwame, are the uh, powers still be still messing with you for uh, talking about trading and coding? Have they died down with that pressure on you? Uh, no, they, they put a strike on this channel for me posting up the same thing that everybody else posted. So um, they don't they don't, they definitely don't like that message. I think I got more pushback from the school boards than anything. These uh, teachers unions don't want trading and coding in schools because, uh, you know, I don't want to speak why they don't, but it just seems like a lot of them don't, in my opinion. So did Shannon Sharp ever reach out to you? Nope. That's crazy. They're not, they're not gonna do stuff like that. Mm -mm. I don't think they, they know want, when they step Because they don't I don't think that they have the how can I say it? They don't want to ruin their reputations by coming on your channel and you being able to say what you wanted to say to them directly and them to respond back. I think it's they're afraid it's gonna mess up. What they what they got going on Hollywood wise or whatever because yeah I would come straight to I mean a lot of things that you've been into with a with certain amount of guests a certain amount of people out in uh, sports let's say that on the sports channels they don't want to come and address you directly with it because they know damn well you can say what you want to say and not get a response on social media you know what I'm saying well, it's all, I, I, wouldn't even, I wouldn't even disrespect them if they came on my show I would well, have not, not disrespecting them but saying what it is that needs to be said mm -hmm. hearing the things that they really need to hear and they know that if you respond back on social media it's a, a thing where you might record something and then they can respond back but to verbally have that conversation they don't want to have that mm -hmm. they say whatever they want to say but instead of come, come to him come to Kwame and say what it was you wanted to say instead of making a whole video about it that's what I've done but you know I guess they have a reputation to uphold because this makes for a, a great conversation. But yeah, say that to Kwame, what you just said on on uh, your live or whatever, whatever it is, you did it. But they probably would expose themselves as fanatics, just like the uh, some of the young gentlemen that has come up here. You, it would expose the fact that they don't know much about basketball other than try to force feed you these uh, hyped up stats. Um, that that's not what I'm speaking about. I'm speaking about an in-between game. I'm talking about uh, anybody who played basketball and know that guy that's that scorer on a team that once he started aging, he started getting to a spot and rising up. That's all he had. He had to fall back on his old school game. It's called that old school game because you want to be able to score without using so much energy. LeBron is an older guy, but he's still scoring. He has to use energy like a young guy to score. He's literally running baseline to baseline, or he's shooting threes. Mm -hmm. And as the game go on, and the more tired he gets, the more threes he take. And if his legs are gone, then he's shooting them out of the game. If his legs are there, he's he's making great shots. And so yeah. you know, they're not going to win like that. That's true. And, and Tracy, uh, here's another thing. They know what they're saying is BS. That's another thing. It's not like they're exactly. They know. That what they're saying is they're trying to take up for their boy and just make and put out good reports about him to, to, to push the narratives for him to make them look, you know, hold his head up, make it like it ain't his fault. And they they know True. that so they, they would never put themselves in a debate with somebody like Kwame Brown or even myself or anybody else because they know they, they can't win that argument because they already know what he's saying is correct. They just got to say they got to be against it because they have to stick up for whatever the agenda is, which True. is LeBron. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's what that really is about. So with that being said, that guy is not going to ever, you know, they're going to try to act like it didn't exist. It was that day. We're going to move on and try to ignore it. Like today, what's the new agenda for LeBron that seemed to come out from his press? He had a torn tendon in his foot. That is the new lie going around today because the retirement thing didn't work. Everybody wasn't buying that. Now we got to buy the new one of the day. The new, the, new, the new line of the day that seemed to just come out of thin air 
from LeBron's media people. He played the whole last month with a torn tendon in his foot. <laughs> so hero. That's a hero. <laughs> who remember him limping and any time doing <laughs> the playoffs? He was not limping. He did not walk with a limp here. So I was like, man, I've never saw him limp. He ain't limping right here when he's going off the court. Fast so, as he's been running. Yeah, now all of a sudden, look, he cared more about that manicure than everything else. He's like, man, I got to make an appointment to the manicure. Look at him. Look, <laughs> that's all he cared about. It's like my nails, they're they all over the place. I got to get my nails. No, he's, he's talking to the hand, talking about why did you fail me you at the last second. You are, dude. <laughs> All right, he care about that manicure. He gotta give. He gotta go see uh, Susu real quick. <laughs> <laughs> your ass crazy. <laughs> crazy girl, man. So, so how long? How, how many years y'all think LeBron got left? None, but no, he. he got <laughs> Damn. His, his years was done. He really should have retired in 2018. That's a. You know how they say go out when, but they really drug him along and gave him like it wouldn't be bad if he left now, but he won't go out with Bronny, and you know yeah. his his vanity won't let him leave like this. Like he ain't gonna leave like this. He would leave with a tour. Like he'll be announcing, "This is my final season," and it'll be a big party at every stadium. He's oh, like, right. what they call an attention whore. That's what he loves the thing to be about him. Well, so he was coming back next year game. like this. It's gonna take it's gonna take six hours to finish a Laker game. How many damn free throws they gonna shoot? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Eddie Griffin said that thing so great, man. I was on the floor. Every <laughs> he was how many goddamn free throws they gonna get to the Lakers? That's what they did for the Celtics yesterday because they need to expand the game. And everybody thought it was crazy when I said, "Nah, the Heat and six. Because I was like, they gotta have a weekend game. They can, they go squeeze this thing to the weekend, but I mean I don't even know why Miami even showed up in Boston because they they did they got railroad from the jump ball and the rest were get the jump ball. Just, it was like nineteen free throws to six <laughs> for the Miami Heat that go to the hole every game. You go, they got six free throws and the, the Celtics at nineteen. I said, oh jeez. <laughs> <laughs> they gonna get their six games. They gonna make sure. They ain't gonna have no. Well, see what I mean about the. See what I mean about the controversy. Somebody said you just you sound like a white supremacist. I <laughs> you know, come on, you just. <laughs> 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 oh man! Oh shit! These opinions, man. Opinions That's hilarious. Facts, crazy. I Damn, we oh, really do got guys walking on earth. I guess I was right when I first came to YouTube and said this guy's walking on earth. There's a, there's a couple names that I could name that you can't talk about or it's a problem. And you have other black uh, people, men and women, go crazy on you about people that will never meet in life. <laughs> yeah. That's the crazy yeah. part. Yeah. You'll never yeah, meet in life. themselves in front of a car for them. I got you. <laughs> They're like, that dude won't even pay for your funeral. <laughs> mm -mm. Well, now so we crazy. all hate you. Now we hating on them. Now you see that, hey, you see that last comment. Finals and breaking records at age 38. MJ and Kobe never saw the playoffs at age 35. Y'all need to stop hating on the, uh, a brother. Okay. Now how did he get there as opposed well to how Kobe and Michael got there? They weren't going around from doing a world tour, going from team to team, create monster teams to get to that status. So it doesn't make a difference. That's that's beyond. They Hello. don't have the same stats or ability that they did, period. So nobody's hating. Hello. But I do want to say, I do want to say, I do think LeBron is a great player. I just don't got him as the GOAT. You know what I'm saying? True. What he's done right there with you. Uh, coming out of high school, coming out of high school, I've never seen somebody that hype coming out of high school and and live up and exceed the hype. I give him that. You know what I'm saying? But I, I can't give him the GOAT, uh, the greatest of all time. To me, you got to have that killer instinct. And Mike had fools scared before they even laced them up. You know what I'm saying? They had him scared. I don't think players fear LeBron. I don't think they fear him like they did Mike. You know what I'm saying? They feared Mike. Players feared Mike. NBA players feared him. You know, you want to do your best. You wasn't going to be a punk and back down from Mike. But a lot of players was fearful of Mike. And I don't think they feared LeBron like they did. Mm -hmm. Definitely so. I agree with that. Amen. Amen. <laughs> I couldn't say it better myself. I give him ghost status on being the a young black man that he was 
and coming into yep. the NBA and yep. never getting in trouble. I'll get in gold status because that's a that's a feat in itself to come from the background that he did, mm -hmm. as opposed to looking at old boy with the gun and shit. It's like this dude came in there at 18, 19 years old, and you have your whole entire career with no issues. So I give him gold status on that for conduct conducting himself in a way that he never created controversy off the court. I can, Tracy, definitely, I can Tracy, definitely agree with that. Hold on, Tracy. Let me tell you something. He did. They just cleaned it up for him. Uh -oh. We talking about the news lady <laughs> the baby? Oh, not just the baby. I mean, there's so much stuff LeBron James was involved in that they know about. They just cleaned it up. They going to mop it up for him because he the agenda. You okay? well, I want to know because <laughs> I don't know about this, but tell me something. I don't know. Oh, well, if if Gilbert Arenas could go to jail every other weekend and not get in, and, and nobody knew about it, then they can cover up a lot. Right, oh, LeBron James was driving two hundred, like one hundred and eighty miles an hour, with his and got pulled over and had the speeding ticket and the felony violation. All that was gone. Oh yeah, I remember. I, I Car was an illegal car. Car wasn't even licensed to be on the street. Illegal car. Yeah, <laughs> I remember I drove fast too. They make all that go away. It's man, it's so much stuff this dude that done. It's it just it's gonna probably come out once he retired. All the stuff that he didn't did. But people been trying to talk, and every time somebody talk, they silencing them. Every yeah. time somebody they say it one time, next thing you know, they gone. Like the the guy who said the thing about the EPO, Kitchell Sonny. Oh yeah, yeah. I All of a sudden, one. nobody talked about it. They act like they ain't even here. <laughs> yeah, why they ain't seen his yard dog at the jail? Yeah, I, I don't see none of them saying nothing on there. His podcast still coming on. LeBron ain't sued him. Nothing. Yep. Why they quiet on him? Where's Shannon Shaw at on him? Why he didn't get a second? And I sure enough was wondering why nobody else said anything about it. Like it just came out there, then it went away. I was like, what? But that's crazy. And I definitely oh, think, uh, speaking on uh, Kobe Bryant, speaking on him, rest in peace, I think he was a great player too. I definitely do. But my only issue with Kobe is when, when the world came down on him, he threw a man under the bus that didn't have nothing to do with him. And Jack, he didn't have to throw out his ass. He didn't have to throw shit. I was like, why he That ain't basketball, bro. I was like, what? He's like, well, Shaq did it too. No, yeah. <laughs> he was saying like, yeah. like, man, can we just pay to make? He think he talking in private with this man. Like Shaq wasn't never in getting in any trouble. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah, like, he was like, Shaq Shaq did the fuck. Yeah. like, he didn't know this is gonna go public. He think he talking one on one with a guy. He was like, look, yeah. you know, Shaq, Shaq good at paying and making this go away. You know, I'm trying to do what Shaq doing right now and pay to make this thing go away. I don't need my wife to find out about this. So he was more concerned about his wife finding out because she was pregnant and she ended right. up losing the baby behind all this stuff. So yeah, yeah, so yeah, I can't believe that. I that was my only issue with him, right? But he didn't ran like tell on Shaq and call Shaq to get the divorce. Man, Gil no more. Gil no more about the public that team that way. about Shaq and what caused the divorce. Gil know all about it. <laughs> that didn't help though that, that information did not help no it, it, well it didn't for the press and it caused a beef and all this stuff they they got yeah. this one thank god with uh bill russell got involved and put took them in the room and said hey enough <laughs> said enough that's that's it bill russell put it in all that he took kobe and shaq in the room and said, y'all ain't finna let these people do this to y'all and put y'all on national TV. Got y'all like two wild dogs trying to kill each other out there on the court. But no. first of all, Carcino, it was uh, just like you talking about. If you a face of the league, they're going to they gonna look out for you. They're going to look out for you. They're going to make uh, uh keep the women quiet. They're going to make certain things go away. You know what I'm saying? And uh, I think that LeBron is the face of the league still. You know what I'm saying? That's why they make a lot of these things go away, and they've done it for past players like Mike, too. You know what I'm saying? Mike women shut up. You know what I'm saying? They ain't talk. You know, uh, I bet Kwame could uh, touch to that. And they probably, uh, speaking 